Welcome to Texan Live right here from Corpus Christi, Texas. Jared Robinson, Coach Dane Sauce here, here with you for a matchup for the ages right now. Cal Allen versus the Sinton Pirates right here at Whataburger Field in Corpus Christi. Again, right here, Dave Campbell's Texan Live. We're happy to be here with you for Thursday night, one game series, District 31 versus District 26 for the ability to go over to Dishfalk Field next week and play for a state championship coach. This game, about 365 days ago, was scheduled for right here in this very stadium, and unfortunately, uh, that game got banged and it got rained out. Uh, ended up playing the next day in Laredo. We're not going to get rained out here tonight. It is a beautiful night right here in Corpus Christi, Texas. Yeah, it's an unbelievable night for baseball, two-story programs that, have, that kind of uh, run South Texas for many years. And they are getting together tonight to uh, – you know, clash against one another. It's going to be an awesome baseball game. It is going to be a good one, no doubt whatsoever. Uh, and it's a situation where, again, these teams, uh, no stranger to each other, not very far apart, only about 30 minutes away, uh, Sinton and Cal Allen. And uh, they've played a, a game this year already back on March the 4th. Cal Allen fell to Sinton uh, in that game, but it was pretty early in the year. You're talking back – that's back in uh, – that's back in really uh, – the uh, tournament series, maybe first or second tournament of the year. Yeah, back in March, and you know, many of the uh, you know pitching matchups and things aren't the same during that time of time of the year. You never know when number ones match up with number fives and things like that. It just depends on how your rotation's going, and so you know, it's it's uh, you know you, you can put a little stock in that, but you, it's not it's not a chance to put a whole lot of stock in it. And so you know, these these teams have probably had some lineup changes throughout the course of the year, and and injuries may occur throughout the course of the year. And so, you know, obviously these two teams are playing their best at the right time of the year, which is right now. And, uh, you know, it's going to be an unbelievable uh, baseball game. And, and uh, you know, we'll have a lot to talk about as far as the tradition behind these two as we go along. Yeah, there's that uh, very, very rich in tradition. Both of these teams, the Sitton Pirates and Cal Allen, uh, come into this game. Let's let's talk a little bit about the Cal Allen uh, Wildcats. Uh, they Their road – through the playoffs look like this. They took down Raymondville in two games, winning 4-0 and 8-0. Crystal City in the second round, 18-0 and 15-2. Robstown in the third round. They lost game one, 3-4, but took the next two, 6-4 and 14-5. Then last week they took down the Bernie Greyhounds, uh, won game one, 12-6, lost game two, 2-3 two in extra innings, uh, and then game, uh, game three, 2-1, two and that was – uh, a run that was scored in the uh, top of the seventh inning right. that uh, came out with a victory over Coach Merrill and the, the Bernie Greyhounds. Outscored their opponents in the playoffs 84-25. to And the final game that they beat Bernie was a memorable one for Coach Steve Chapman. It gave him 1,116 wins. Coach, that puts him on the top of the pedestal. Yep, it sure does. You know, I was the ba president of the Baseball Coach Association, and Coach Chapman was inducted into the Texas High School Baseball Hall of Fame while well, I was the president, and, uh, you know, he's won a lot of games. He won a lot of games up until that point, and he's won a lot of games since then. So, you know, Coach Chapman is a guy that, uh, you know, when you talk baseball in South Texas, his name's got to come to the forefront. And, you know, you've kind of got a a guy here that is kind of the legend of South Texas, and you've got another guy from Sinton who's kind of the up-and-coming and a younger guy that's that's got his program also headed, you know, Sinton's always said the program's been heading in the right direction, but also he's got his program on track, and he will probably be one of those guys in the near future or in the long future that will be successful over the long run, too. Chapman took over uh, the uh, most wins from Bobby Megal. Megal. Megal at Lubbock Monterey. Uh, spent there. He was almost 30 years there, Coach Megal was. He won three state championships. Well, guess what? Here at Cal Allen, this is his 40th year, Coach Chapman, <laughs> right here uh, for the Cal Allen Wildcats. He's got three championships to his name as well as Cal Allen team in 2000, 2005, and 2008. Brought home the state championships, a six combined state championships for these two teams right here. Uh, during the, uh, the 2000 to 2010 year, they pretty much ran it. They run the 2000, 2005, 2008 Cal Allen, and then the Sitton Pirates in 2002 uh, took the state championship. You also got to understand that that was, you know, during that time, they were a classification up at that time. You know, they were in what was 5A, which is, you know, now, you know, now, now which is, was 5A then, which is, you know, 
5A now, but it was yep. a little bit different. It was up a classification from where they're at right now. But, uh, you know, he's just done an awesome job down there at Cal Allen. You can't say enough about the tradition and the, and, the, and the program that he's run down there. Yeah, again, 40 years, all of them at one school, and that's the Cal Allen Wildcats. On the other side of that, you got a coach who – He's got aspirations of that same exact thing. A former Sinton Pirate himself, Coach Adrian Alanese, uh, graduated uh, from Sinton High School, went on to play for the University of Texas, and then came back home to his hometown, uh, and he has had a ton of success here. Sinton uh, has a, uh, three state championships to their name, 1988, 1989, and then the 2002 state championship. And I believe Adrian Alanese was part of that state championship. Yeah, he was part of that. And, and the man that usually sits on this in this booth where we're sitting, Coach Gene Casper, he, uh, he calls a lot of the Hooks games, but he was his coach. And so, uh, you know, like you said, he's taken over for Coach Casper and done an outstanding job. And, and uh, you know, anytime you talk 4A baseball, these two teams are going to come, their two names are going to come to the top of the top of the conversation. So. Yeah, th- their records are uh, they're, they're pretty amazing. Coming into the season or coming into this game tonight, Sinton 33 and 1. Yeah. The one loss was to Tolosa Midway, who they defeated last week. And right. let's go through the Sinton Pirates uh, trip right here to this regional final. It was defeating Brazosport in two games, 10 to 0 and 14 to 1. The Wimberley Texans, they took down 13 to 1 and then 9 to 8 in game two. The Need- Needville. 12-0, 12-0 on that one. Tolosa Midway last week was an 11-0 victory, outscoring their opponents in the playoffs 81-10. Yep. A very, very impressive team uh, here for this Sitton Pirate program. Is, uh, again, this is a, a field that they're pretty comfortable at, Coach. They they played a game here already this year. Yeah, you know, Coach Allen, he's, he understands that, you know, at some point in time during the playoffs they're going to play a game here, so you want to try to get your kids in this environment, which they're, they're used to that, and they – Get them down here and let them play a game and see what it's like, and that way they're not in such awe when they come here and play. And, and both of these schools, you know, this is not a – they're not – the stage is not too big for either one of them. And so, you know, it's an unbelievable venue. Uh, you know, it's supposed to be sold out tonight. The, the seats are filling up as fast as they can. So, you know, the atmosphere is going to be an unbelievable atmosphere for, for a high school baseball game. Yeah, Coach, you, you and I were here last year for the game that was supposed to be played here, and uh, there was about six or 7,000 people in the concourse getting out of the rain last year. Right now, the only thing they're in the concourse for is getting out of the sunshine because it is a warm and beautiful day as we overlook uh, right here the water at Corpus Christi at the Hooks Field, at Whataburger Field. Uh, and it is an absolute joy to be here with you again. Dave Campbell's Texan Live. Shout out to Dre and Jesse who really do all the hard work behind the scenes with Dave Campbell's Texan Live. Ashley Pickle, Matt Stepp, Greg Tepper, all those guys who, who really uh, make the miracles happen. We just get the ability to come out here and, uh, and be a small, small piece and part of it. Uh, and we appreciate that opportunity as both of the teams down here are announced. Let's go through the starting lineups for this Cal Allen Wildcat program. Leading it off, it'll be number seven playing right field, Emiliano Zapata in the two hole. The left fielder, number one, Ethan Salinas. In the three hole, first baseman, number 11, Roberto Perez. Third baseman, number five, Braden Sprinzel will be in the four hole. In in the five hole behind the dish tonight will be number eight, A.J. Yepes. Tarek Hickman will be in center field wearing number 14. And we're going to throw it down and take a minute here to moment of silence for Uvalde, Texas. And we'll keep it right here, throw it down for the national anthem.
there you have it, the plan of the National Anthem. We are just about ready for baseball. Wrapping up the lineup for the Cal Island Wildcats. Number 14, Tarek Hickman will be in center field. Tres Vasquez will be the designated hitter, and he is hitting for Justin Lampkin, who will be on the bump tonight for the Cal Island Wildcats. Matt Lopez will be in the eight hole at the shortstop position, and Aiden Buntello will be the second baseman for Cal Allen. For the Senton Pirates, the visiting team here tonight, Marco Gonzalez will lead it off the second baseman. Blake Mitchell will be behind the plate tonight. Ryland Galvan will be at shortstop in the three-hole. Jaquay Stewart will be the first baseman. Cannon Chester, the right fielder. Renee Galvan will be the center fielder in the six-hole. In seven, Braden Brown, the third baseman. Caden McCoy will be in left field. And in the nine-hole, Nick Flores, the designated hitter. And he is hitting for the pitcher for Sinton Wyatt Viatric. And let's talk a little bit right now about the pitcher that's going to go out and face off against this very, very talented and powerful Sinton Pirate team. It's going to be Justin Lampkin. .79 ERA on the year, Coach. 11-0 strikeout to walk ratio. 139 strikeouts to 10 walks. Yeah, that's a pretty amazing stat right there. You know, this young man played against them last year or, or matched up against them last year in a one-game set. And it, I think it went eight innings and it ended up being a 2-1 or one to nothing game. And so, you know, they're no, they're no strangers to one another. I'm sure these two these kids probably play with each other in the summertime or play against each other in the summertime on select teams or summer league teams or whatnot. And so, you know, Justin's probably familiar with their lineup as well as why it's very familiar with uh, Corpus Christi or Cal Allen's lineup. And so, you know, again, going to be adds to the excitement of tonight's ball game. Yeah, no doubt whatsoever. Get ready for it because it is going to be a good one. This game. I'm going to tell you right now, with the two pitchers that are on the mound, we'll, we'll talk about Wyatt Beatrick when he hits the mound uh, in the bottom half of the inning. But these young men, they know how to throw. They know how to pitch very, very well. We've seen Sinton uh, several times this year, and I've watched a lot uh, right here on this Cal Allen Wildcat team. They are not afraid to pitch backwards. They're not afraid to throw breaking balls and fastball counts, and they will try to keep you out on your toes as much as you can uh, against, again, two talented programs. The lefty, Justin Lampkin, will step out right now onto the mound. He's going to square off against Marco Gonzalez, Blake Mitchell, and Ryland Galvan. You know, Justin's a kid that, you know, he's, like you said, he's left-handed, which, you know, presents a problem for high school hitters to begin with. Uh, he's a kid that really changes speed, like you talked about, changes speeds really well, works both sides of the plate, has command of all three pitches. You know, you know, it's one of those deal situations where you'll see, you know, early in the ball game, is, is he going to have some command issues early in the ball game, or is he going to be on on point early in the ball game? We we'll have to watch and see how that works out. But uh, you know, one thing that may play a little bit of a factor early in the ball game is a little bit of a shadow that kind of creeps across the middle of the infield as this thing goes. So, you know, it's going to be a little bit of an advantage to the hit to the pitcher because of that shadow. But uh, you know, it's just again, it's a Justin's a great pitcher and does a good job on the mound and and uh, we'll, we'll see what he's got. He has no doubt whatsoever he is going to give it all he's got. And, and let's talk about this stadium right now because we said earlier it's absolutely beautiful complex here at Whataburger Field. 315 down the left and right field line, 375 in the power alleys. And then in dead center it's 400 feet with a batter's eye. Uh, they go as, as high as you can imagine. And out in center field, the beautiful bridge uh, over the top of Corpus Christi. They're going to build them a new bridge, actually, to the left. Gonna yeah. Kind of box Whataburger Field in right here. But, uh, I think it's going to be it's kind of kind of dwarf this other bridge over here. Yeah, it's getting quite a bit bigger if you haven't been to Corpus uh, in a little while. It is no doubt bigger. Marco Gonzalez, the sophomore second baseman, is going to lead us off 381 on the year. 40 hits, five doubles, two triples. He's got 43 runs scored. And he is quick, 16 stolen bases. So this young man, can he can pick them up and put them down with the best of them. First pitch from Lampkin coming up right here. Regional finals underway here in Region 4. Strike on the inside corner. No balls and one strike. See here early, you see Justin, you know, working the inside part of the plate, you know, which is something you don't see a lot of high school pitchers do. Most pitchers stay away, away, away. But he does a good job of starting him off and working the inside part. Missed just a little bit. Came back inside on that fastball. Evens up the count one and one. On deck is Blake Mitchell. In the hole will be the shortstop, Ryland Galvan. One ball and one strike from Lampkin. Pitch on the way, low. Two balls and one strike now. He went, kind of went with a change up way right there, you know, and uh, you know, just kind of held on to it a little bit long, kind of buried it in the dirt. Outfield 
pretty much straight up for this Wildcat team. Foul ball over here on the right-hand side. It'll be two balls and two strikes. Cameraman tonight is none other than Mr. Pat Lowry. So if you've got any uh, props or complaints for that matter, I'll give you his email address. You can send them to him. How about that? <laughs> two balls and two strike. Lampkin brings it inside. Misses low. Three and two full count. Just one thing you have to watch early in ball games is, you know, these hitters really working the count, getting the pit, running the pitch count up, and that way these other hitters can, and their dugouts can see all the different pitches that they throw. Full count, 3-2 pitch on the way. This one's hit towards the right center field gap. Center fielder will not get there. It'll be a leadoff base hit for Marco Gonzalez. And it'll bring up Blake Mitchell, center fielder Hickman. Tried to make a hard step in on it. Son, you mentioned a minute ago, going down over the third base dugout. So right field and maybe even center field just a little bit. Uh, ball kind of hung up a little bit. Hickman and Zapata couldn't make it there, and it's a leadoff single for Gonzalez. Blake Mitchell steps in. Yeah, wind's kind of blowing from right field to left field. And so the ball's going to carry a little bit more to left field. It's not going to carry much to right field. And so, you know, like you said, they, these outfitters are going to really have to pay attention to the ball coming off the bat so they can get a good jump on the ball. And so, obviously, it's a big outfield also. And so they, they maybe have to pay attention to how big the outfield is and see they may be playing a little deeper than what they're normally used to in their own ballparks. Fastball misses high and inside to Blake Mitchell. Mitchell, 473 on the year. He's got some power. Seven home runs, five triples, and 15 doubles. 49 RBIs, so right there on the cusp of the 50th. Same high fastball misses away on that one. Two balls and no strikes. And I, I mentioned earlier that both of these pitchers are not going to be scared to pitch backwards. You may see a breaking ball rather than a, in a fastball count right here possibly to a very, very good left-handed bat. Yeah, I'm sure you just can't sit here and put one on his belt right here, so I'm sure he's going to be be worried about, you know, not throwing something right down the middle that he can just get the barrel of the bat on. Yeah, throws a good changeup right on the outside corner. Two balls and one strike. As we are just underway, if you've joined us right here on Dave Campbell's Texan Live, we appreciate you tuning in on a Thursday night. Ryland Galvan on deck. Two balls and one strike from Lampkin. Pickoff move over to first. Gonzalez back in easily. Kind of show-me move right there for Lampkin. Yeah, I'm sure he's got a better one. So. Mitchell back in with the bright pink batting gloves. 2-1 pitch coming up. Lampkin delivers. Fastball way outside, 3-1. and one. Same situation as 2-0 and oh just a moment ago now. It's one of those situations where, you know, in these deep in these playoff games like this, you never know when one inning can – can turn the tide of a ball game and put a crooked number up, and it's hard to overcome as good as the pitching is on both these two staffs. 3-1 pitch from Justin. Comes set, brings it to the plate. Outside ball four, just a smidge outside. So first two runners for Sinton, or first two batters for Sinton are on base. Gonzalez down at second base. Blake Mitchell down at first, and it will bring up Ryland Galvan, 462 on the year. He's got 42 hits, six doubles, six triples, nine home runs for Ryland Galvan. Yeah, here you're going to see kind of what Coach Alanese, what his, what his thought process is here. Is he going to, is he going to you know, let his 3-0 hitter kind of hit away? Is he going to you know, try to play for, to get that early lead for his pitcher? You know, what, you know what's his philosophy or what you're, what, you're, what you're thinking in this situation? So we'll see what his thought process is here. On deck, the first baseman, Jaquay Stewart. Lampkin comes set, Gonzalez hopping back and forth off a of second base. Huge swing from Ryland, comes up empty. No balls and one strike on the fastball from Justin Lampkin. Straight up in the outfield. Salinas in left, Hickman in center, and Zapata in right. Sprinzel, Lopez, Buentello, and Perez left to right on the infield. And back behind the plate is A.J. Yepes. You saw Perez was really pulled in tighter on the last pitch, but now he's backing up at first base, and so... They may think that maybe he's not going to bunt in this situation here. So he's backed up behind the runner at first base now. And those infielders just outside of that sun line. It's right at the edge of the infield dirt almost now, Coach. And as it continues to go down, it will uh, it'll get brighter and brighter, especially for Emiliano Zapata out in right field right now. No balls and one strike to Ryland Galvan. Lamb can come set. Breaking ball misses on the inside. One ball, one strike. 
sitting early in the ball game, they're being really patient, doing a good job of making him, you know, throw some pitches, making sure that they're not going to swing swing at a bunch of stuff that's out of the strike zone. And so, obviously, they're doing a really good job about plate discipline. I was wondering here, Yepes and, and Lambkin seemed a little bit off right there, Coach, Just especially on the, on the last pitch. Several times Lambkin stepped off, one to check Gonzalez at second base. We talked about his speed earlier. Uh, Gonzalez, 16 stolen bases. The uh, series before last, he actually stole third, so making sure that they keep their eye on him. But it did seem like a little disconnect with his catcher, Yepes, as well. So Yeah, they're making sure that maybe Gonzalez is not stealing their signals at second base and relaying them back to the hitter. And so they're making sure they're on the same page with what sign. And, and uh, you know, you don't want to give away an edge this early in the ball game. You see the first baseman coming back in in front of the, front of the hitter here. One ball, one strike to Ryland. Pitch on the way. Catches the outside corner, one and two. Good spot right there. Looked like he took a little bit off that and worked the outside part of the outside corner of the plate there and threw a really good pitch. Boy, it's a really impressive crowd. I mean, it's starting to fill up down both sides. One ball, two strikes. Lampkin's dealing. Stays up and away, evens up the count. Two and two. Didn't miss by much right there. Double play depth in the middle with Lopez and Buentello. Pitcher's best friend right here is the old 6-4-3. Two balls, two strikes. Lampkin, pitch on the way. This one's drilled towards left. Will it stay fair? It's hooking around. Foul ball. Rylan Lopez put a swing on it. And it ends up to the left side of the foul pole. Coach Alanese was pointing fair. The home plate umpire said no, it was not, and it was a foul ball, and it was a very loud strike. Yeah, he left something up a little bit right there, and he really put a good charge into it. Like you said, it's just a it's a long strike. That's all he's got to think about. I'm sure that's what his first baseman came in and just kind of whispered in his ear, hey, man, it's just a long strike. Get right back in the zone right here, and let's get us get us out of this inning. Quality pitch right here from Lampkin erases that loud strike that just happened. Two balls and two strikes. Lampkin set. Pitch is on the way. This one's flared off on the right-hand side. We'll do it again. Lampkin settling in a little bit. You said it in pregame. Kind of getting those nerves out right out of the beginning. Again, this was a... A year ago, this was a fantastic ball game between these two teams. Two balls, two strikes. Lampkin set. Him and Yepes are on the same page. Leg kick on the way inside. Misses three and two. That's one of the advantages from the, for these umpires of playing in this ballpark. You know, the foul poles are obviously quite a bit taller than what they are probably in your in your high school ballpark. And sometimes that becomes a guessing game on whether that ball went over the pole inside or outside but in this ballpark it's pretty easy to tell because the foul pole is so or fair pole whatever you want to call yeah, it that's true it's so uh tall and so they were easy to see whether it hooked inside or went, or went in front of it full count three balls two strikes two runners on lampkin deals foul to the right hand side from galvan and we'll do it again galvan seeing a lot of pitches right here in this at bat can't say enough about all three of these hitters that have hit so far about their approaches at the plate and their at bats and so Eighth pitch of the at-bat coming up right here for Ryland. Gonzalez down at second base. He led off this game with a single. Blake Mitchell followed with a walk. And now full count right here to Ryland Galvan. Lampkin comes set. No check for the runners. This one's grounded towards third, but it's off the foot of Ryland Galvan. So we'll see pitch number nine here in this at bat. It remains three balls and two strikes, and that one hurts. Yeah. You know, Justin's doing a good job. You know, it's a lot of pressure on a pitcher to really have to continually just to pump strikes in in this situation. You know, you don't want to load the bases up, but he's doing a great job of, of continually pounding that zone and, and going to force uh, Ryland to, to do something with the bat. Lampkin back out on top of the bump now. Comes set. Three balls and two strikes. We'll do it all over again. Pitch on the way. Got him on strike three. Nice fastball right there from Justin Lampkin, and there's one out. And 
We mentioned it a minute ago, the fly ball down the left field line is nothing more than just that, a foul ball. And he got him on the strikeout. Brings up Jaquay Stewart, who may possibly be the hottest hitter on the planet <laughs> right now. He's got uh, 439 average, 36 hits, 10 doubles, 11 home runs. I believe six of those, six or seven of those are in the last five games. He had four home runs in the series, uh, the area series versus the Wimberley Texans. And unfortunately, we knew that all too well. Yeah, exactly. First pitch to Stewart. Hit towards the shortstop. Taylor made double play. Lopez to second, over to first. In, not in time. The Gonzalez with a big round around third base. Stewart dove in to first base. Buentello's throw missed just a little bit. Perez didn't quite get it out there. There's two outs on the fielder's choice down at second base. So Mitchell is going to be erased from the base pads. Stewart will be at first. Two outs, and it will bring up Cannon Chester. Yeah, just that little bit of bobble at shortstop, and I think he wasn't real clean getting it out of his glove and getting it to the second baseman, which caused, uh, you know, the little bit of a slow down there and a good job by Jaquay of, of hustling out of the box. You know, for a big guy, he's got some good foot speed. We talked about that on our way up here today, but he's got good foot speed. You know, little things like that are what can become big, can can you know, get you a, a run or cost you a run in this situation. Good job by him of, of busting his tail down to first base. First and third situation now for Cal Allen. See if the uh, Pirates put anything on here. And again, a little bit of uh, little bit of second guessing right here as Lampkin steps off twice. Cannon Chester steps into the box, 404 on the year. He's got 36 hits, 34 RBIs. He'd love nothing more than the 35th right here to give Sinton the lead. First pitch to Chester. Strike right down Broadway, 0-1. Cannon going to Tyler Junior College. No balls in one strike now to the five hole. Right fielder Cannon Chester. Lampkin comes set again. Pitch is on the way. Misses low and in, one and one. Cannon's you know, got 34 RBIs on the season, so he's a guy that's in the RBIs. He's no stranger to this RBI situation and done a good job for them of knocking in runs. And so... Like you said, there's nothing he'd like more than to push one or two of these across. Big outfield here at Whataburger Field. Something into the gap right here and the, could be off to the races. Stewart down at first base. Has not tried to uh, advance to second base just yet. We'll see if they keep him there. One and one count. Shortstop's playing a long ways to the pull side, and so I'm sure the second baseman's got the bag on any type of steal. 1-1. One, one. This one's flat out. It's going to be right over here by us. Might land get... here in the box with us. Mm. One ball, two strikes. Never know. We may get a souvenir up here. Pat, may, right. Pat may take a, a, a baseball home today. Yeah. Well, they've – nothing Justin wouldn't like more is to be able to get out of this situation with – situation and not give up anything so yeah it's a huge pitch right here first two runners of the inning get on with with gonzalez uh, and mitchell and now you got an opportunity to rewrite one pitch away one two pitch this one's hit towards center field hickman's going to be coming in on it the wind is blowing in very hard and this ball will fall down a run will score an rbi for cannon chester the shortstop matt lopez you talked about the wind earlier he kind of gave up on it a little bit Tarek hickman had a a run for the ages right there. It seemed like he was never going to get there. And that ball falls out there in the Bermuda Triangle, and that's a tough one right there for Justin Lampkin. That's uh, kind of a routine fly yeah. ball that unfortunately hits the ground. Goes as a base hit, but uh, that's a tough one. Yeah, that's a pitch that probably the shortstop gave up on too, too early. You know, center, Like I said, the center fielder, you know, they're playing a little bit bigger ballpark than what they normally play in. He's playing a little bit deeper. You know, the 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 background behind home plates a little bit different than what they're used to and so they don't really see the ball coming off the bat as well as what they may see in their home park and and um, you know it was just one of those miscommunications between the infielder and the outfielder that they work on all the time they probably nine times out of ten get it right breaking ball on the outside to Renee Galvan strike one no balls and one strike Renee 440 on the year he's got 33 hits 33 RBIs so just mentioned a moment ago, 35th RBI for Cannon Chester. Strike two right on the outside to Renee Galvan. Falls down, no balls and two strikes now to the center fielder for the Pirates. 
Good job of Jaquay Stewart as well that was on first. He busted his tail, made it all the way to third. Chester ends up with a, a single. 0-2, misses way outside, 1-2. and two. On deck is the third baseman, Braden Brown. Renee's kind of been a stable in this outfield and this athletic program for a long time down at Senton. So. 1-2 pitch from Lampkin on the way. Got him on the outside, strike three. So Lampkin strikes out two, leaves two on. One run comes across on two hits right here in the top of the first inning. Stay with us. Cal Allen comes to the plate in the bottom of half of the first. You're listening and watching Texas High School Baseball right here on Dave Campbell's Texan Live. Texas, now's the time to get a Ford built for you, by you. Pick your color, your wheels, and other available features specifically designed for your Ford. Want an F-150 with a 12-inch touchscreen? 400 horsepower and Explorer or a moonroof. You got it. And now 1,000 bonus cash on top of all public offers when you custom order. See your local Ford dealer. Order F-150 and get 1,000 bonus cash, 1,000 accessories cash, plus complimentary maintenance. Ford is the best in Texas. Come enjoy the heart of Katy, Texas, one of the most delightful cities in the Lone Star State. The best part? It's a short drive from Houston and minutes from the Energy Corridor. With places to stay and places to play, anything you'd like to eat, and an old town charm that can't be beat. Activities and fun for the entire family. Enjoy the best of both worlds in the City of Champions, Katy, Texas. For more information, go to cityofkady.com. And we are back right here from Corpus Christi, Texas. Jared Robinson, Coach Dane Saucier, live with you here on Dave Campbell's Texan Live. Sinton puts one run across on the RBI single from Cannon Chester. Marco Gonzalez scored his 44th run of the year. And now the Cal Allen Wildcats get their first opportunity here in the bottom half of the first inning. It'll be Emiliano Zapata, Ethan Salinas, and Roberto Perez. And they're going to be facing off events against the number one for the Sinton Pirates, Wyatt Viatric. Wyatt, 10-0 on the year. The seniors going to McLennan Community College. 56 innings, 26 hits, only five earned runs. 82 strikeouts to 18 walks with a .62 ERA. I don't know the last time that uh, there were two uh, pitchers with sub .75 ERAs going into the regional finals, but, man, you are watching it here tonight with us, and it is going to be good. <laughs> Boy, McLennan's getting them a good one here. You know, kid that really, you know, you see there, he strikes, has a lot of strikeouts, doesn't walk many people, so he's got command of all his pitches, and obviously he's a he's a, he's a proven winner. You saw him pitch last year in the state in the first game of the state tournament, and here he is again pitching in the regional finals. Strike one right on the outside corner to Emiliano Zapata. Zapata 359 on the year. 23 runs scored, 28 hits. Strike two to Zapata, 0-2. One thing about these Sentin Pirates pitchers, they will throw fast. Yep, they're going to get go, back on the mound, they and they're going to be ready to go. They Just like their coach, they get on the rubber and they go to work. So 0-2, strike three. Good morning, good afternoon, and good night. Strikeout number one of the night for Wyatt Viatric. It'll bring up Ethan Salinas. You know, that's the reason why it was so important for Sinton to get that first run. You know, it's 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 a lot easier to go out there and, and, and work on pounding that zone when you got a one run lead. You can just go out there and say, you know, you guys hit it out of this park and we'll tip your hat to you and tie it at one to one. But first pitch to Salinas, misses just a little bit outside, wasn't too far off. One ball and no strikes. Salinas, 325 on the year, 25 hits, 23 runs scored, 13 RBIs. He does have a double. Swung through, fouled off, one and one, off the back leg of Blake Mitchell right there. Evens up the count, one ball, one strike, and one out. On deck is the first baseman, Roberto Perez. Outfield pulled a little bit in, Cannon Chester, Rene Galvan, and Caden McCoy. One and one pitch. Inside, misses two and one. Kind of tried to aim that one a little bit almost. Kind of came out of his hand a little weird. Viatrix been a great pitcher for Sinton for many years. Two one pitch on the way. Misses low three and one. So first three pitches for Wyatt Viatrix were all strike. Force four pitches. Last three, three balls in a row. Three one pitch on the way from Wyatt. 
Ball four. Salinas reaches first base. It'll bring up Roberto Perez. Perez 449 on the year, 40 hits, 26 RBIs. Got a little bit of power. Two triples on the year for Perez. You know, the thing sticks out to me, he's got 40 hits on the season, so he's a guy that puts the ball in play, you know, in this big ballpark with a lot of room out there. He can put the ball in play and make things happen because of that. Salinas down at first base, pretty good lead. First pitch up and away to Roberto Perez. Five balls in a row now for Wyatt Viatric. On deck is Braden Sprinzel, the third baseman. Both, both of these teams, you will hear to do the old Texas A&M ball five, ball six, <laughs> and they'll continue to do it. It is packed house here at Whataburger. One and oh, catches the inside corner, evens it up one and one. The ball sixes will stop now. That puts an end to that. So. Yeah. I can imagine it gets a little bit old if you're on the mound, though. <laughs> one ball, one strike. Viatric comes set. Checks over at first base to Salinas. Pitch on the way. Fouled off on the left-hand side. One ball and two strikes. They said it was sold out, and there's not many seats that don't have a body in them. I hadn't found a seat yet that's at least not saved. Let's put it that way. There's a big berm out in right field that's... It's, full of people sitting on blankets or just on the ground and and just people wherever you can find the spot they're there one ball two strikes coming up pitch on the way got him out in front good pitch right there from Beatrick second strikeout of the inning for Wyatt and it brings up Braden Sprinzel yeah went to the breaking ball there and kind of caught him caught him with this out on his front foot and you know got him to check his swing that situation and so get that important second out and See if they can get through the top of their lineup. Sprintzel 384 on the year. 33 hits coming in. Leads the team with 10 doubles as well. And towards the top uh, of this Cal Allen Wildcat team with 24 RBIs. First pitch from Viatric. It's hit towards left field. McCoy is right there and he'll have it. Cal Allen leaves one on. No hits. One to zero after the... One complete right here from Whataburger Field in Corpus Christi, Texas. Stay with us. You're watching Texas High School Playoff Baseball right here. Dave Campbell's Texan Live. Ford built for you, by you. Texas, get yours. Built from the ground up with your choice of colors, wheels, and other available features specifically designed for your Ford. Want a head-up display and escape? Seven GOAT modes in Bronco Sport? Or best-in-class gas torque and Ranger? You got it. And now 1,000 bonus cash on top of all public offers when you custom order. See your local Ford dealer. Order your Ford today and get 1,000 bonus cash plus complimentary maintenance. Ford is the best in Texas. Your husband loves his mesquite smoked ham cut razor thin. That's why H-E-B has online customization and will slice it however you want it. Your daughter loves cheese. She has 27 favorites. Good thing H-E-B offers an unmatched assortment with over 200 specialty varieties. You love having one less thing to do on your to-do list. That's why H-E-B does all the shopping for you and then gets it to your car or front door. No store does more to bring the best to your door. Shop H-E-B with always free curbside and only $5 delivery. And we are back. Top of the second inning. Sinton leads 1-0 to zero after the RBI single from Cannon Chester in the top of the first inning. Leading it off here will be 7, 8, and 9. Braden Brown, Caden McCoy, and the designated hitter Nick Flores. Justin Lampkin, 30 pitches in the first inning. Two strikeouts for that young man. You can see on the camera right there as Pat Lowry shows you. There ain't a seat available here at Whataburger Field. You know, it's one thing that's impressive about the sentence lineup. Is there's really no, you know, spots in the lineup where they where you can just take take a little bit, of, take something off because you know they hit they hit well up and down their lineup, and so there's really no holes in their lineup per se, and so that's what makes them really really dangerous on offense. That's why they their run run ratio is what it was in the playoffs and and uh, you know they're going to be tough to beat. Leading it off, it will be the third baseman number 2 Braden Brown. Braden 352 on the year, 32 hits, 19 walks for the young man from Sinton, Texas. First pitch from Lampkin. 
Misses outside on the fastball. One ball and no strikes. Mentioned earlier, and you mentioned in the top of the first, Lampkin 30 pitches in the first inning. So these Sinton Pirates saw a lot of pitches from Justin. Fastball right down Broadway, one and one. Good thing about a one-game series is you got the whole staff. You know, you're not trying to wait, you know, and go. You have kind of a little bit quicker hook maybe in a one-game series if somebody gets in trouble because, you know, there's no tomorrow. And so you you, you have the philosophy that, you know, we got to get out there and get after it. And if, if something doesn't go right with the pitcher, maybe you go to the next guy. So One ball and two strikes fouled straight back from Braden Brown. Mentioned it earlier, 139 strikeouts on the year for Lampkin. Coming in two tonight, 1-2 pitch, fouled straight back again. Two in the first inning, gives him 141. Justin does a good job of working the inner third of the plate. That's one thing I've noticed about watching, you know, the first first inning and then uh, this part of the second inning. I watched him last year when he pitched in the regional finals. He works both sides of the plate really, really well. 1-2 pitch coming up from Lampkin. Good breaking ball right on the outside corner. Third strikeout of the night for Justin. Braden Brown goes down. It brings up the left fielder, Caden McCoy. Nick Flores on deck. McCoy, the junior for the Pirates. 303 batting average, 23 hits. He's got 10 stolen bases, so a young man who's got some pretty good speed as well. Lampkin out of the windup. First pitch. Coming up to McCoy. Misses outside, 1-0. One of the juniors on the team. One ball and no strike from Lampkin. Catches the outside corner there, 1-1. One one. Slowly working his way back in from the, the batter's box. Catches the outside, evens it up. One ball, one strike, one out here in the top of the second inning. The big lefty back on. Big swing that comes up empty from McCoy. One ball and two strikes. Straight up in the outfield. Sun has worked its way past uh, Roberto down at first base, but the second baseman, Buncello, still in that sun. And, of course, the right fielder, uh, Zapata, he's dead in the sun right now. One-two pitch on the way. Got him. Strike three. Three strikeouts in a row for Justin Lampkin. And it brings up Nick Flores, the designated hitter. You see the second baseman kind of creeping in a little bit to try to, I think he's trying to get in there where he has a better view of the ball coming off the bat and it's not going through that sun. And so, you know, he's trying to cheat up a little bit. Doesn't want to cheat up so much it takes away his range. But you can tell he's, he's kind of using his hand on his, on his hat and try to shield the sun a little bit from him. Flores, 263 on the year, three doubles. Strike on the outside corner to Flores. No balls and one strike. And you're starting to, you know, part of, part of the game, too, as well, is, is figuring out the home plate umpire's zone and what he's going to give you. And uh, as you kind of get to picking at that zone a little bit, as we see right there, a breaking ball back inside, you may kind of get some of those stretch calls. Yeah. And you're seeing Justin yeah. Lamb can just tear it up right yeah, here. He's, he's doing a really good job here working both sides. It's all speed pitches, change up, fastball. 0-2 pitch on the way. Flied out down the right field line. It will get foul into the fans. Hopefully everybody's watching it. They're in the sun as well. Yeah, they're having to struggle with the sun too. <laughs> no balls and two strikes. We'll do it again. On deck, back to the top of the lineup with Marco Gonzalez, who has one of the two hits on the day for the Sinton Pirates. He scored the first run in the top of the first inning. 0-2 from Lampkin. Yepes is going to set up on the outside. Got him on the high fastball. Lampkin, one, two, three in the top of the second inning, has settled in and takes care of business. Bottom of the second coming up, Cal Allen back to the plate. You're watching Texas High School Playoff Baseball right here on Dave Campbell's Texan Live. Here at Texas A&M University Kingsville, we are a family. We support each other through thick and thin. We work together, grow together, excel together. We inspire each other to become the great minds of the future. We are here to ensure you succeed. Apply today to get started. This is your time. One more. One more. One more, guys. One more. Set. Hop. Let's 
go, one more, one more. Hey, kid. Yeah, we'll take one more. Hello, one more. What? And we are back right here from Whataburger Field. Leading it off, it'll be the catcher, A.J. Yepes, followed by Terry Kickman and Trace Vasquez. Catcher steps in the box. Yep, is 3-12 on the year for this Cal Allen team. Takes strike one right on the outside corner. No balls and one strike. Just misses. Same spot. Little bit more outside for Viatric. Evens it up one and one. This one's hit towards center field. Rene Galvan, two steps in, and he's right underneath it. Line drive to the center fielder, Rene Galvan, is out number one here in the bottom half of the second inning. You see Sinton's outfielders aren't playing quite as deep as Kyle Allen's outfielders, and so you know, some of those in-between balls they might be able to get to. Tara Kickman, 265 on the year. 24 runs, 27 RBIs, strike one from Viatric. On deck is Tres Vasquez. Viatric back on top. Misses a little bit high on that one, one and one. We said Viatric is going to work fast. As soon as he gets the ball back from Blake Mitchell, he will be back on top of the mound as soon as you can imagine. One, one pitch. Swung through right there by Hickman. One ball, two strikes. He is a defensive player's dream pitcher. Guy gets up there and goes to work and doesn't make you stand around a very long time on the field. Hickman is going to take his time getting back into the box a little bit right here trying to throw Viatric off one two pitch got him good off speed pitch right there from Wyatt Viatric and there's two outs here in the bottom of the second inning it brings up that designated hitter Trace Vasquez you know that might be something as a game goes on you see them talk about you know you see him talk about slowing the pitcher down a little bit maybe take calling time a little bit and kind of breaking his breaking his routine a little bit First pitch to Vasquez. Misses low. Ball one. Vasquez, 286 on the year. He does have one home run, which I believe there's only six home runs total for this Cal Allen team. Fouls one off of his right foot. Evens it up one and one. On deck is the shortstop, Matt Lopez. Trace is hitting for the pitcher, Justin Lampkin. Some teams are built around, you know, hitting the long ball and hitting, being more offensive that way. And some other teams are, or uh, you know, are built around being kind of small ball type guys and getting a lot of base hits and running the bases and hit and run those type of things. And you know, I'm sure. Ground ball hit towards Jaquay Stewart. He'll flip it over to Viatric, and a one-two-three inning for the Sinton Pirates in the bottom of the second inning. And all of a sudden. Both of these teams, Justin Lampkin and Wyatt Viatric, have got it figured out. One, two, three goes both teams in the second inning through two. It's Sinton one to zero lead. Top of the third coming up right here. You're watching Texas High School Playoff Baseball on Dave Campbell's Texan Live. Texas, now's the time to get a Ford built for you, by you. Pick your color, your wheels, and other available features specifically designed for your Ford. Want an F-150 with a 12-inch touchscreen? 400 horsepower and Explorer or a moonroof. You got it. And now 1,000 bonus cash on top of all public offers when you custom order. See your local Ford dealer. Order F-150 and get 1,000 bonus cash, 1,000 accessories cash, plus complimentary maintenance. Ford is the best in Texas. Here at Texas A&M University Kingsville, we are a family. We support each other through thick and thin. We work together grow together, excel together. We inspire each other to become the great minds of the future. We are here to ensure you succeed. Apply today to get started. This is your time. 
Welcome back right here to Corpus Christi, Texas. Game tonight is going to be brought to you by your best in Texas Ford dealers. Ford is the best in Texas. Game also brought to you by the City of Katy. Small town charm, big city convenience. Visit cityofkady.com to learn more or schedule your visit today. Justin Lampkin back out on top of the mound, Coach, and he went one, two, three, all strikeouts yep. in the top half of the second inning. Top of the third inning right here. Top of the lineup, Marco Gonzalez. Both pitchers got a little bit of those jitters out of their out of them in the first inning and came out in the second inning and really attacked the zone and got ahead in the count, and that makes it a lot easier on them and their defense. Fouled off down the right-hand side. Marco Gonzalez down, no balls and one strike. One for one on the night for Marco. Breaking ball stays in right there, one and one. Marco got his 30, 41st hit of the year in his 44th run scored in the top of the first inning. One ball and one strike from Lampkin. Pitch on the way. Caught the outside corner, one and two. And you're starting to see Lampkin really find that outside corner. And then, of course, the young man who you, you mentioned in a minute ago, not afraid to come inside, uh, really keeps these Sinton Pirates guessing. Lampkin out of the windup. One, two pitch, stays up, two and two. Yeah, he kind of, you know, work you away, 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 and then he'll kind of stand you up with that fastball inside and then go right back away, just like he just did. Gonzalez had a Single in his first at bat. This one hit towards the second baseman, Buentuelo. He'll flip it over to Perez. Easy out. Four to three. One down here in the top of the third inning. It brings up the catcher, Blake Mitchell. And it's always nice to have that confidence in your defense. Aiden Buentuelo right there makes an absolutely routine play look routine. Yep, yep. You know, Blake Mitchell's a young man that's, you know, being looked at by a lot of different organizations, whether it be major league organizations and, and obviously committed to LSU already. And so, you know, we'll see what the future unfolds for him. Fastball misses high to Blake. One ball and no strikes. He walked his first at-bat, so no official at-bat for Blake. 473 on the year with 43 hits. 33 walks for the young man from Senton. Good breaking ball right there from Justin Lampkin right on the outside corner. Evens it up 1-1. Lampkin back out on top of the mound, ready to go. 1-1 one, one pitch, even further outside there, though, 2-1. and one. You know, some left-handers look uncomfortable with the left-handed pitcher slash left against the left-handed hitter, but, uh, you know, Blake really doesn't look uncomfortable at all at the plate. So, 2-1 pitch, catches the outside, 2-2. Two and two. Mitchell kind of double-checked that one on the outside corner. Thought maybe a little bit too far out, yeah. but... Two balls and two strikes now on the two-hole batter for Sinton. Him and the Sinton faithful in the stands didn't like the call. Yeah, the 4,000 fans. This one's fouled off on the left-hand side. We'll do the 2-2 pitch again. Always, uh, always have to mention the extra 7,000 umpires that we have here tonight. <laughs> no offense whatsoever because I would be doing the same thing if it was my hometown team. <laughs> Man, this place. Human it, nature. It is standing room only, by the way, here. Misses high. Three balls and two strikes. Full count. Blake almost chunked his bat right there. Thought maybe it was ball four, but remembered the strike call just a moment ago. 3-2. Lampkin a little bit longer to look in at Yepes. And now he's going to take Blake yeah. Mitchell may call time right here, and he does. That is one thing about this Sinton Pirate team. The, the baseball IQ is very high, and that's both of these teams, Cal right. Wildcats included. Full count, 3-2 pitch from Lampkin. Breaking ball, stays high, ball four. Second walk of the game to Blake Mitchell. He'll go down to first base. Ryland Galvan will step into the plate. Ryland struck out his first at bat, but hit one about 340 feet down the left field line, but it ended up being foul. Now you can't say enough about these two communities. I mean, just looking at the stands and looking how many people are here, how much they support their athletic programs, how much they support their baseball program. You can't say enough about the people of these two towns of Sinton and Corpus Cal Allen that uh, what they do for their, their kids. Mitchell with a good lead off of first. Pitch inside misses Ryland Galvan. One ball and no strikes. Mitchell does have a little bit of foot speed. Seven stolen bases on the year. In the regular season, he only had three, but he's had four in the playoffs. 
He also plays a little shortstop when he's not playing catcher. So 1-0. Lamb can down to Perez at first base. Back in safely and easily is Blake Mitchell. Sun has pretty much set down past the infield. Only the shortstop, Matt Lopez and Aiden Buentello, the second baseman now in the Sun. Lampkin comes set. Pitch on the way. Strike on the outside corner. Evens it up 1-1. Jaquay Stewart on deck for the Pirates. Deep in the outfield down in center field. Hickman, Salinas in center and left pretty deep. Big lead at first base. Another pickoff move over to first. They'll keep Blake a little bit closer. Roberto didn't even put the tag down. Mitchell was back safely. I still doubt we've seen the best move right there from Justin Lampkin. Kind of the still with the show me move right now. Yeah. One and one pitch coming up to Ryland. Slide step on the way. Misses up and away. Two and one. Very common there when you slide step. Sometimes, you know, even though you're slide stepping, you still got to, you know, get that release point down where you can get the ball down the strike zone. Sometimes when kids slide step, they leave the ball up in the strike zone. So. Lampkin goes back to work here, 2-1. Mitchell with another big lead, and he will throw over. Perez will throw the lazy tag down right there, but again, back in easily. Mitchell getting a good read off the leg kick from Hickman. Or not from Hickman, from Lampkin. Big swing right there from Ryland Galvan on a good pitch buried inside from Justin Lampkin. Evens up the count, 2-2. Two two. Kind of throwing that breaking breaking ball at the back foot of the right-handed hitter from the left-handed pitcher and it's a good spot to it's a good spot for it to be. Yeah, it's hard to get the barrel of the bat on the ball when it's down there. 2-2 two -two pitch coming up from Justin. Just off the inside corner, 3-2. and two. You heard the oohs and the ahs there on the Cal Allen side. Ryland almost read that one breaking ball a little bit, kind of jumped a little bit. And I think that's probably what uh, got the crowd going. Full count, 3-2 pitch coming up. Back-to-back -back full counts. Ryland to the shortstop. Lopez to second base, Buentello. Over to first base, Ryland will beat it out. Fielder's choice, second time that Blake Mitchell has been erased from the base pads on a fielder's choice. But there's two outs, and Ryland Galvan will be down at first. And we'll see if we get uh, Jaquay Stewart right here into the box. I usually... Uh, call this young man right here the hottest man on the planet. He grounded out his first at bat going to Houston Baptist University. Ryland Galvan's got nine stolen bases of his own this year. Jaquay Stewart 439. Batting average coming into tonight. 51 RBIs. A bunch of RBIs. Right on the outside corner. No balls and one strike. Quay didn't like the strike call there. No balls and one strike. Lampkin comes set. Checks over at first. He'll bring it home. Catches the outside 0-2. Oh <laughs> Stewart's going to walk down and have a quick conversation with Coach Adrian Alaniz. It's a good move right here from uh, Coach Alaniz. You can see a little bit of frustration in your first baseman and kind of get him over there and calm him down a little bit. Yeah, I'm sure Adrian's probably telling him just to you know, let those two go and flush those two down the drain and, and get back in the box and compete right here. You know, sometimes you you may not agree with what's called, but you're going to have to live with it. And so, But you got to get in there and compete as a hitter, and that's what I'm sure Coach, Coach Allen needs is telling him. On deck is the right fielder, Cannon Chester. No balls and two strikes to the first baseman, Jaquay Stewart. Five strikeouts on the evening for Justin Lampkin. 0-2 pitch coming up to Jaquay. Got him on the outside corner. Strike three. Top of the third ends with one runner left on. No hits. 1-0 through two and a half innings. The Senton Pirates lead over Cal Allen. Stay with us. Bottom of the third coming up right here. You're watching Dave Campbell's Texan Live. Here at Texas A&M University Kingsville, we are a family. We support each other through thick and thin. We work together, grow together, 
excel together. We inspire each other to become the great minds of the future. We are here to ensure you succeed. Apply today to get started. This is your time. Eight nine one. Beatrix throwing to Lavila. And we are back right here. Dave Campbell's Texan live. Wyatt Beatrix back out on the mound and pumping up the velo a little bit right there as he <laughs> crow hops off the mound. Leading it off will be eight nine and one for the Cal Allen Wildcats. It'll be Matt Lopez, Aiden Buentello, and Emiliano Zapata. Justin Lampkin has settled in nicely. Four strikeouts in the last two innings. No hits. Only the one run in the top of the first off the RBI single from Cannon Chester. No hits so far for the Cal Allen Wildcats. Wyatt Viatric, he's been a good one too. He's got yeah. three strikeouts on the night. Like you said, he's a guy that, that works real quick. You know, he commands, he throws, throws his breaking ball for a strike. He's got, you know, he's got a plus fastball tonight. You know, I was just commenting as we were coming back on the air. I looked like his velo was up a little bit from the last time that I watched him throw. And so, but, uh, you know, one of them deals where you've got to get to those pitchers early. And now if they've settled in the game, it's going to be tough sledding a little bit. Shortstop Matt Lopez steps in. 333 on the air for Matt. Ball one misses. One ball and no strikes. Lopez, the shortstop. Two triples and four doubles. So he's got a little extra base hit pop in there. Takes strike on the outside corner, one and one. Aiden Buentello on deck. Beatrick back on top of the mound, ready to go. One one pitch. Hit towards the second baseman, Gonzalez. He'll scoop it up, flip it over to Stewart at first, and it'll be a 4-3 put out for the first out here in the bottom of the third inning. It brings up the nine-hole hitting Aiden Buentello. Aiden. Saw in the box, Mitchell. ready to go. So Mitchell just stepped there and turned to Brown at third base and told him to watch the bunt. So we saw Brown take two or three steps forward. Strike one from Viatric. Again, right back on top of the mound, ready to go. 0 1 pitch. 0 and 2 as that one's pumped down Broadway as well. On deck is Emiliano Zapata back to the top of the lineup. 0 2 pitch coming up. Just a little bit outside, 1 and 2. Went to the break and ball didn't get the call from the home plate umpire. One ball, two strikes, one out. Hit towards the shortstop. Ryland will circle it. Fired over to first base. Six to three. Out number two. Good job right there from Ryland. Galvan taking that extra big hop right there, making sure he makes a strong throw over to Jaquay Stewart. And it brings up top of the lineup with Emiliano Zapata. 0 for 1 on the night. Struck out his first at bat. Came in 359 on the year. He is all kinds of all over the plate right here, too, coach. Yeah, he's. Maybe trying to make the pitcher be a little uncomfortable, but strike one on the bottom of the zone. Seem to be bothering him. Viatric now 0 and 1 on deck. Ethan Salinas, good off speed right there. Change up right there. Change up. Oh, no balls and two strikes. And Viatric one pitch away from getting out. Right here in the bottom of the third. One, two, three again. Just inside one and two. A little bit up, I think. Almost looks like a spike slider right there as he kind of comes across it a little bit. One, two. Pitch is on the way. Hit down the first baseline foul. Ooh. Error on the coach over yeah, there. Nearly a good play. I'm telling you right now. Listen, I'm not afraid to give an error to a coach over there. <laughs> Adrian o or Andre Salonis, Omar Rodriguez, and Isaac Martinez, the assistant coaches for Sinton. One of them just got an error. I don't know who it was. One, two pitch on the way. Got him. Strike three. Down in the zone, buried it in the bottom. Three up, three down in the bottom of the third inning. 1-0, Sinton still leads. You're listening and watching Dave Campbell's Texan Live. 
here at Texas A&M University Kingsville. We are a family. We support each other through thick and thin. We work together, grow together, excel together. We inspire each other to become the great minds of the future. We are here to ensure you succeed. Apply today to get started. This is your time. Texas, now's the time to get a Ford built for you, by you. Pick your color, your wheels, and other available features specifically designed for your Ford. Want an F-150 with a 12-inch touchscreen? 400 horsepower and Explorer or a moonroof. You got it. And now 1,000 bonus cash on top of all public offers when you custom order. See your local Ford dealer. Order F-150 and get 1,000 bonus cash, 1,000 accessories cash, plus complimentary maintenance. Ford is the best in Texas. Top of the fourth inning right here, Sinton and Cal Allen in a dogfight. Tonight's game brought to you by Texas A&M Kingsville, located just south of Corpus Christi, also by Body Armor. Body Armor, more than a sports drink. If you've ever wondered what it would be like to be a sports official, to be in the middle of the action, to play an integral role ensuring the games are played fairly and safely. The Texas Association of Sports Officials, known as TESO, can help you make that happen. They are experiencing a shortage of officials in all sports. They need people with love of the game and want to be a part of the solution so that the student athletes can continue to participate in the games they love. Never, If you've never officiated before, don't worry about it. TESO will provide you with the training you need. Why not make your first great call by contacting www.taso.org. God love the officials. Yes, we've got a lot of them here tonight. Some of them we've got four on the field, and we've got 4,000 in the stands. So. <laughs> Maybe a couple more than 4,000. Cannon Chester will lead us off. The right fielder for the Pirates, Lampkin. Nice off speed on the changeup, leading it off to Chester here. No balls and one strike. And can't say enough about officials and what they do you know they it's a tough job because you only get you know noticed if you don't do it right and so but these guys do an outstanding job oh one misses outside one and one and you're right it's uh you get a split second to make a call that uh, can make a difference and these guys do a great job these are the best of the best out here one and one pitch misses low and in two and one you know, both these teams, both these teams agree to whatever chapter that they're using here. And so, you know, it's both teams are, uh, both coaches are comfortable with these guys. They get the, a lot of times I get to pick who they want, you know. And so, so obviously it's, some people think, well, this is your crew or their, their crew or whatever. It's, you know, it's, it's agreed upon by both, both schools. Cannon Chester, two balls and one strike from Lambkin. Pitch on the way. This one's drilled towards center field. Hickman is going to range up to his right. Left fielder will come in, and he will not make the play. Salinas tried to make the uh, spectacular Willie Mays Hayes catch right there, but went off the bottom of his glove. Third hit of the night, second for Cannon Chester, and he'll have a leadoff single here in the top of the fourth inning. It brings up Rene Galvan. And for the second time yeah. in a row, Cannon Chester finds the Bermuda Triangle. Yeah, it's that same little spot out there, and, and, and uh, you know, the ball's just not carrying maybe as well as what they think it's going to out there. And so, you know, with them playing as deep as what they are, those in-between balls are, are, are tougher than what they may seem. Rene Galvan squares one to the left-hand side. It's foul, though. No balls in one strike. Wondered if we may see Rene square to bunt right here. The third baseman Sprintzel was up on the grass. I think that's Cannon's second one in the same spot. It's the exact same spot. Yeah, you could have thrown a tarp over both yeah. of them, and he's two for two. I take that back. They're, they are going to give an error on the left fielder, Ethan Salinas. Originally gave him a hit. Now no balls and two strikes on Rene Galvan. So the uh, it's a tough error. official uh, scorekeeper here makes the change. Either way, Chester's down at first base, and 0-2 to Rene Galvan. Lampkin comes set. Pitch. This one's drilled towards right center. It is going to get out, and it is a long ways. Around second is Chester. Galvan will come in. He will round third. Chester will score. Rene Galvan with an RBI triple. The center fielder, Hickman, was playing over to the left center field gap, and Galvan turned on it and drove it out on the right center field. Sinton leads 2-0. to zero. Yeah, the ball is 
kind of down and into a left-hander and he drove in that right center field gap and the ball was hit a long way right there. Probably in a lot of ballparks that have been out of the ballpark, but uh, he hit, really hit it good and, and obviously good speed. Got him all the way around the third. 34th RBI on the year for Vinay. Braden Brown steps in, 352 on the year. First pitch, this one's hit towards left field. Ethan Salinas will open up and go back. It will be over the head of Ethan Salinas. Braden Brown around first base will have an RBI double. Denton is heating up here in the top of the fourth inning. Two runs across as Rene Galvan and Cannon Chester score an RBI double from Braden Brown. Caden McCoy will step into the box. Braden, 22nd RBI of the year for that young man on his 33rd hit, 11th double. Well, before the inning started, Coach Allen has got his guys together in front of the dugout and talked to them a little bit. I'm sure he talked to them about you know, going back to what they were doing in the first inning, being real patient, seeing a good pitch, picking out a good pitch that they could do something with and really drive. And, uh, you know, obviously the the talk that he had has is, is paid off, and they put some good swings on him here in the in the fourth inning. Ball misses down low, 1-0. Caden McCoy steps in. Caden 303 on the year. Strikeout victim his first at bat in the top of the second. He's 0-for-1. Braden Brown down at second base with the RBI double. One ball and no strikes to McCoy. Pitch on the way. Fouled off on the right-hand side. Evens up the count one and one. Fans, as a reminder, please return all foul balls to the dugout. An RBI triple from Rene Galvan and an RBI double from Brandon Brown has plated two runs here in the top of the fourth inning. A little action going to the Cal Allen bullpen. Number 25. Lampkin comes set. One and one pitch. Good breaking ball. Hayden Brock is going down to throw. One ball, two strikes now from Lampkin. Takes a look out at Brown. Pitch on the way. Got him way out in front. Another good off speed right there from Justin Lampkin. First out of the top of the fourth inning. It brings up the nine-hole batter, Nick Flores. On deck is the top of the lineup with Marco Gonzalez. It is a long run out to the bullpen here, too, by the way, as it's yeah. 375 feet out to left center field. There's guys running on the warning track, and nobody's even bothering to even say anything about them. So, wild plays going on. One down here in the top of the fourth. Lampkin fouled off from Flores. No balls and one strike. Flores, 263 on the year. Struck out his first at bat, so 0 for 1. Outfield moved a little bit in. Hickman and Salinas both in center and left have kind of inched in just a little bit here. 0-1 pitch to Flores on the inside, 0-2. Lampkin is, has been effective going on that inside yep. on these right-handed batters. You know, they all crowd the plate, and that's one thing I noticed back earlier is they all get right on top of the plate, and so you just, sometimes you can run it in on their hands a little bit. 0-2, got him. Again, went back in there again. Two down, back-to-back -back strikeouts from Justin Lampkin. Nick Flores goes down at back to the top of the lineup with Marco Gonzalez. One for two on the evening for Marco. Led off the game in the top of the first with a single. And then a ground ball to the second baseman, Aiden Buentello, in the top of the third inning. Braden Brown down at second base after the RBI double over the head of the left fielder, Ethan Salinas, that played it Rene Galvan. First pitch to Marco. Breaking ball, it's a good one. No balls and one strike. On deck, the catcher, Blake Mitchell. No balls and one strike from Lampkin. Just a little bit outside, one and one. Gonzalez. Mentioned earlier, scored his 44th run of the year. 41 hits now for Marco. 
One ball and one strike. Lampkin will step off, making sure that him and A.J. Yepes are on the same page. We saw this earlier with Marco Gonzalez actually out. One and one pitch for Lampkin. On the way. This one's hit towards left field. This one's another one that's dying in. Salinas got a better jump on it, and he's going to come in and make the play. Fly ball to the left fielder is the third out of the inning, but Sinton puts two runs across on two hits, one error by the Cal Allen Wildcats. It's 3-0. to zero. Sinton leads over Cal Allen. Bottom of the fourth inning coming up. You are watching Texas High School Playoff Baseball right here on Dave Campbell's Texan Live. Come enjoy the heart of Katy, Texas, one of the most delightful cities in the Lone Star State. The best part? It's a short drive from Houston and minutes from the Energy Corridor. With places to stay and places to play, anything you'd like to eat, and an old town charm that can't be beat. Activities and fun for the entire family. Enjoy the best of both worlds in the City of Champions, Katy, Texas. For more information, go to cityofkady.com. Afford built for you, by you. Texas, get yours. Built from the ground up with your choice of colors, wheels, and other available features specifically designed for your Ford. Want a head-up display and escape? Seven GOAT modes in Bronco Sport? Or best-in-class gas torque and Ranger? You got it. And now 1,000 bonus cash on top of all public offers when you custom order. See your local Ford dealer. Order your Ford today and get 1,000 bonus cash plus complimentary maintenance. Ford is the best in Texas. Bottom of the fourth inning coming up right here again. Corpus Christi, Texas, Whataburger Field. Region 4 Finals. District 26 versus District 23. Game brought to you by U.S. News and World Report has ranked Texas Children's number one in heart for the fifth year in a row. See why at texaschildrens.org backslash best. Jared Robinson, Coach Dane Sauce here, here with you on Dave Campbell's Texan Live. Pat Lowry uh, doing the magical camera work for us tonight. That's actually the hard one. I've actually tried to do the camera. It's, it's not exactly easy. I don't have the, yeah. the steadiest of hand in the world. I actually think they have let more people in this place because it is – it is standing yeah, room only standing down right room field only and left on field. Both top corridors and in left field, right field berm. I mean, it's you can't get another person in here. I'm sure the Hooks would like to see crowds like this on the nights they play. Yeah, I guarantee it. Absolutely. Ethan Salinas will lead it off here. It'll be 2 3 4 for the Cal Allen Wildcats. Salinas Perez followed by Sprinzel. Ethan Salinas, 325 on the year coming into tonight's game. First pitch from Viatric. High and away, ball one. Viatric sitting at 35 pitches through three innings, by the way. So he's in the rocking chair, 1-0. Misses up, two balls and no strikes. Yeah, I don't, I don't think you can get anybody else in this stadium right here and be in fire code. 2-0 and pitch. Hit towards the third baseman. Brown will round it. Fire it over to first base. Hill Gavi. 5-3 put out. Erases Ethan Salinas. And it'll go to Roberto Perez. First baseman number 11, Roberto Perez. On deck is Braden Sprenzel. Perez 449 on the year coming into today's game. 40 hits leads the team. Also 26 RBIs. Perez struck out in the first. Breaking ball stays outside 1-0. Good pitch right there. Pulls the string on it. Change up. Perez swings over the top of it, one and one. Perez is also one of their leaders in run scores. Obviously, they wish they could get a couple of base runners here where they can put some pressure and maybe get Beatrick out of the stretch. Hadn't been out of the stretch very much, only once or twice now. Missed a little bit right there. Didn't miss by much, two and one.
Theatric back on top of the mound. Perez in the box, ready to go. 2-1. This one's hit towards the second baseman. Gonzalez to his left. Slides, won't get it. Single for Roberto Perez. Good attempt right there from Marco Gonzalez. And that's the first hit of the night for uh, the Cal Allen Wildcats. Braden Sprenzel now steps into the box. 384 on the year for Braden. 33 hits, 24 RBIs. Leads with 10 doubles. And you mentioned it just a minute ago, Beatrick. Not a whole lot of uh, out of the stretch right here. Only two batters tonight he's faced out of the stretch. He'll work back out of it now. Roberto Perez down at first base. Sprenzel, the left-handed hitting third baseman. Stays up just a little bit on the outside, 1-0. and Sometimes just getting a kid to be out of the stretch and be in something he's not comfortable in, not that he's not comfortable in the stretch, but just something different can cause uh, him to get out of his rhythm a little bit. So. One ball, no strike. Pitch on the way. There's one that catches the outside corner, evens it up 1-1. One one. Doesn't seem to be a problem, but... Braden Sprinzel. Here's a fun fact against Braden Sprinzel. You ready for this one? I'm ready. 109 plate appearances, 86 at bats, not a single strikeout on the year for Braden. That's that's my hats off to him because this day and age, with hats with strikeouts being up in every division of baseball, that's a that's a, quite a feat right there. One one pitch. This one's fouled down the left field side over into the fans. You can see through the camera right there how many fans are here at Whataburger Field. It's one ball and two strikes now on the third baseman. On deck is A.J. Yepes. I hope you just didn't curse him. Why, why would you bring that up? <laughs> why would you bring that up? You think I'm the kiss of death? One, two, pitch on the way. Strikeout right on the top of the zone to Braden Sprinzel. Two down. Mind you, these stats are off of Max Preps. He may have some strikeouts. I, I'll take that to... Well, it was... With a grain of salt. Heck will run one way or the other. <laughs> Either way, if he didn't have any strikeouts, he's not going to be real happy if he goes back and no. listens to the broadcast. Two down now here in the bottom of the fourth inning. This one's fly towards right. Jaquay Stewart is going to work his way out in foul territory. And it will be three outs as A.J. Yepes flies out to the first baseman. Jaquay Stewart on the first pitch he saw. Wyatt Viatric gets out of it. Top of the fifth coming up right here. You're watching Dave Campbell's Texan Live. Your husband loves his mesquite smoked ham cut razor thin. That's why H-E-B has online customization and will slice it however you want it. Your daughter loves cheese. She has 27 favorites. Good thing H-E-B offers an unmatched assortment with over 200 specialty varieties. You love having one less thing to do on your to-do list. That's why H-E-B does all the shopping for you and then gets it to your car or front door. No store does more to bring the best to your door. Shop H-E-B with always free curbside and only $5 delivery. Here at Texas A&M University Kingsville, we are a family. We support each other through thick and thin. We work together, grow together, excel together. We inspire each other to become the great minds of the future. We are here to ensure you succeed. Apply today to get started. This is your time. Top of the fifth inning. Sinton leads 3-0 in the Region 4 Finals here. The Cal Allen Wildcats and the Sinton Pirates. Sinton will put 5, 6, and 7 to the plate here in the top of the fifth. It'll be Cannon Chester, Renee Galvan, followed by Braden Brown. Justin Lampkin back out to the mound. 82 pitches for Justin Lampkin. Eight strikeouts for the lefty from Cal Allen. Hadn't pitched bad at all. Really hasn't pitched bad at all. There's been a couple balls he's left up in the zone that they hit hard the, the last inning. But up until that, he really wasn't hit real hard. Uh, you know, it's just they've hit some balls where they weren't. And so, uh, you know, he got a couple runs off of that. And so, you know, it's it's, it's got to continue to Try to keep them where they're at, keep Sinton intact, keep them where they're at, and give his team a chance to go up there and put a crooked number on the board themselves. And I, I, apparently I can't even read my own scorecard because it's going to be Blake Mitchell, Ryland Galvan, and Jaquay Stewart that will lead it off here in the top of the fifth inning. That happens about the uh, top of the fifth inning for me. My eyesight starts shaking a little bit and try to figure <laughs> out where I'm at again. 
Although Pat Lowry did get me a tee earlier, so I'm happy about that. That's right. Mitchell will lead it off here. Mitchell, no official at bat of the game. He's got two walks, so he's got 34 walks on the year, 473 average for the young man committed to go to the Louisiana State University. A beautiful ballpark here, beautiful atmosphere. See a lot of ships coming in here behind the ballpark. Breaking ball right on the inside. Mitchell did not offer at it. Oh, no balls in one strike. Ryland Galvan on deck. Yeah, it is a beautiful setting right here in Corpus Christi. That is for sure. No balls and one strike. Lampkin hits the outside corner, 0-2. The sun is down, and it is pretty nighttime and beautiful right here in Corpus. 0-2 pitch. Lampkin's going to try to stretch it outside, and Mitchell will not offer at it. One ball, two strikes. Lampkin out of the windup. One and two. Pitch on the way. He'll offer at it. Got him on the outside. Good breaking ball from Justin Lampkin. One out here in the top of the fifth that brings up the shortstop, Rylan Galvan. Rylan's had nothing to show for it, but he's had two really good at-bats. In the first at-bat, he, he had nine or ten pitches and probably hit a ball as hard as any ball has been hit tonight, but it was foul. But uh, he's had two really good at-bats. 0 for 2 with a strikeout and a fielder's choice. Grounded into a fielder's choice, his second at bat. Pitch on the way. This one skied over towards first base. Roberto Perez will range to his left. Ball coming back into towards fair territory, but he'll have it. Fly ball to the first baseman. Roberto Perez is out number 2, and it brings up Jaquay Stewart. And just what the doctor ordered right here for Justin Lampkin, he's about five pitches in to the inning right here. He came in with 82. He could use a short inning right here for Cal Allen, and it's Jaquay Stewart that steps to the box. A strikeout and a fielder's choice 0 for 2 on the night for Jaquay. He could sure use a single-digit inning. On deck is Cannon Chester. I mentioned him a minute ago. Lampkin out of the windup. First pitch to Stewart. Big fastball on the high in the zone. No balls and one strike. Stewart swung through it. Outfield very deep in center field for Hickman. 0-1. Oh, that one stays up. 1-1. One one. Stewart offered at that one the first time. Didn't pull the trigger there. One ball and one strike. Lampkin on the way. Inside fastball, one and two, and there's that inside pitch again, Coach. Mm -hmm. We're working even to a left-hander. Most of those inside fastballs that we've seen have been to right-handers, but, you know, left-hander to a left-handed hitter is working inside is, is tough to do, and that's a good pitch. One, two. Just a little bit outside. Two and two. Cal Allen yeah, he was... He went back out there where he struck him out last time, just was a little bit further off, so... Half the Cal Allen team was headed towards the dugout. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. Deuce is wild here. Top of the fifth inning. Pitch all the way. Got him. Strike three. Lampkin gets the short inning he needed. Sinton goes down one, two, three. They lead three to zero, though, after four and a half. Stay with us. You're watching Texas High School Playoff Baseball right here on Dave Campbell's Texan Live. One more. One more. Hey, kid. Yeah, we'll take one more. Come oh, on, one more. Wow! Texas, now's the time to get a Ford built for you, by you. Pick your color, your wheels, and other available features specifically designed for your Ford. Want an F-150 with a 12-inch touchscreen? 400 horsepower and Explorer or a moonroof. You got it. And now 1,000 bonus cash on top of all public offers when you custom order. See your local Ford dealer. Order F-150 and get 1,000 bonus cash, 1,000 accessories cash, plus complimentary maintenance. Ford is the best in Texas. Bottom of the fifth inning. Back to the mound is Wyatt Viatric. He's been good tonight. Five strikeouts for Wyatt. Only one 
or two base runners have reached base on one hit for this uh, Cal Allen Wildcat team. It's going to be Terry Kickman, Trace Vasquez, and Matt Lopez. Yeah, and he's kept his pitch count down. He's th only thrown 47 pitches through well, it's a four innings. It's going into the fifth inning, and so he's you know he's had some innings there where he's gone under 10 pitches, and so you know he's done a good job of keeping his pitch count down. And you know you do that by getting a working ahead of the hitters. You know I don't know what his first pitch strike ratio has been tonight, but it's there's been a lot of hitters where he started them off with a strike, and so. You know, you can't ask, as a coach, you can't ask for anything more than that. First pitch to Hickman. Strike swung through. Hickman 0 for 1 on the night. Was a strikeout victim. His first at bat hitting 265 on the year coming in to tonight's contest. 0 1 from Viatric. Now 0 and 2 on the strike on the outside corner. He's gone to the breaking ball twice, two times in a row here to start off the inning. Pitch on the way, stretches way outside, one and two. This is where you wonder if the old uh, fastball on the inside corner to change it up. One, two. This one's flied out down the right field line. Fan's going to get another souvenir right here. It'll stay one, two, though. Quality camera work right there from Pat Lowry. One ball and two strikes on the center fielder for Cal Allen. Rene Galvan over towards left center just a little bit. Fastball from Viatric down low. Two balls and two strikes now. A little more velocity on that one right there from Viatric. Yeah, kind of reach back and grab a little extra right there. Bottom of the fifth inning, Sinton leads 3-0 to zero over Cal Allen. Two balls and two strikes. Viatric on the way. That one's kind of got stuck in his palm a little bit. A ball, the old 55-foot breaking ball right there. Now, Hickman, good job right here. Sixth pitch of the at-bat coming up for Hickman. Three balls and two strikes. Pitch on the way from Viatric. Got him on the change up on the outside. He went, our breaking ball, went back to that breaking ball he got on the first two, and he got the strikeout sixth of the night right there for Wyatt Viatric. It brings up Tres Vasquez. You know, Wyatt's really shown command of all of his pitches and he's really done a good job of staying ahead of these hitters. And, and uh, you know, one thing is he hasn't generated any offense for his opponent by, you know, by hitting batters or, or Vasquez blocks. Vasquez heals one down the left field line. Caden McCoy with a great play over right on the line down the left field and two outs. Nice play down there by Caden McCoy. And I agree with you. He's put his he's put his defense in situations where they can make plays, and has not walked a batter yet today. That's a lie. He yeah. walked the second batter of the game. That's the only one. Great job there by Caden. You know, this ballpark's kind of different, and they're not used to those stands being out there down the left field line. And it's a good job by him staying with that, staying with that ball hit right down the line and, and making a good play on it. Matt Lopez, the shortstop, now steps into the box for Cal Allen. Just a little bit down there, 2-0. and oh. Lopez, 333 on the year coming into tonight. 0 oh for 1 on a ground ball to Marco Gonzalez at second base in the third. 2-0 and oh pitch coming up. Fastball count. Took a big hack at it right there. Comes up, fouls it straight back. Two balls and one strike. You know, Wyatt's in a position now to work with a three-run lead. You know, if you get behind, you can, you can afford to just go ahead and reach back and just throw one right down the middle and try to get yourself back in the count because, you know, worst case scenario, it's three to one. So, you know, he's in a, he's in a good position as a pitcher. His offense has done a good job for him. 2-1 fouled off down the right-hand side and it'll even up the count two and two. Foul ball came off of the facing and light pole or something yeah. up there and came back and somebody wore it in the back of the head. Yeah. He head on a swivel. 2-2, two, two, two outs. Breaking ball. Misses outside, full count. Good job by the Waterburger Field staff coming down and checking on the young man or young lady that got hit by the ball, but they seem to be okay. Full count pitch from Beatrick. Got him, strike three. Lopez was on his way down to first, thought he had a walk. Beatrick said, no, no. 
That one's on the top of the zone from the home plate umpire. Two strikeouts in the fifth. Seven total for Wyatt Viatric through five complete. It's Sinton three to zero. You're watching Texas High School play playoff baseball right here on Dave Campbell's Texan Live. Texas, now's the time to get a Ford built for you, by you. Pick your color, your wheels, and other available features specifically designed for your Ford. Want an F-150 with a 12-inch touchscreen? 400 horsepower and Explorer or a moonroof. You got it. And now 1,000 bonus cash on top of all public offers when you custom order. See your local Ford dealer. Order F-150 and get 1,000 bonus cash, 1,000 accessories cash, plus complimentary maintenance. Ford is the best in Texas. Come enjoy the heart of Katy, Texas, one of the most delightful cities in the Lone Star State. The best part? It's a short drive from Houston and minutes from the Energy Corridor. With places to stay and places to play, anything you'd like to eat, and an old town charm that can't be beat. Activities and fun for the entire family. Enjoy the best of both worlds in the City of Champions, Katy, Texas. For more information, go to cityofkady.com. Nine one two. Top of the sixth inning, Cal Allen. Justin Lambkin back out on the mound for the Cal Allen Wildcats. He'll face off against Cannon Chester, and this time it is Cannon Chester, by the That's way. Right. I said it was last inning. It was foreshadowing. That, <laughs> that may or may not be the biggest word I know, by the way. Cannon Chester, Renee Galvan, and Braden Brown, these three. Problems, we've got to spell it. Yeah, that's true. That's true. These three, uh, these three hitters right here combined for two runs in the top of the fourth inning. Now top of the sixth, three to zero, Sinton leads. And Justin Lambkin sitting in 92 pitches, 10 strikeouts on the night for Justin. It's been about placement for Cannon tonight. He's hit the ball in the perfect spot twice. Fastball right on the inside corner from Lambkin. No balls and one strike. And you're right, Can Cannon Chester is two for two with an RBI single. His first at bat scored. In his last at bat, actually one for two. They did give him an error on the second one. Chester off the in cap over to Perez at first base, and Roberto Perez will slowly walk over to first base and tap first. It'll be a one unassisted. One down here brings up the center fielder, Rene Galvan. Rene had an RBI triple. His last at-bat scored on the Braden Brown RBI double. Soft ground ball off the end cap of Cannon Chester. Roberto Perez made it look a little more difficult than yeah. it was. Almost had beat that a, one out down the first baseline. Had a little line. bit fooled there and got it off the end cap. So. One down here in the top of the six, right on the outside corner for Lampkin. No balls and one strike. Lampkin would love to get through the top of the sixth right here and put his uh, team in a position if they can put some crooked numbers up get them back into this ball game 0-1 pitch to Renee outside misses 1-1 one one. yeah you you know you, he's at 92 pitches when he started the inning so he's you know getting up around that 100 pitch mark and so you know this getting close to possibly being the end of the road for him tonight so we'll have to see two balls and one strike now to Renee Galvan on deck is Braden Brown. Hickman straight up in center. Good breaking ball on the outside corner. Evens up the count. Two balls and two strikes with one out here in the top of the sixth. Been a great baseball yeah. game here tonight for this region finals. Lampkin's done a really good job of working that glove side, side of the plate. So. Two balls, two strikes. Out of the windup. Pitch is on the way. Got him on the outside. Another hook on the outside in the perfect spot for Justin Lampkin. 11, 11 strikeout. Yeah, 11 Ks. Two outs here in the top of the six, and it brings up Braden Brown. Braden, one for two, had the RBI double and a strikeout in his first at bat in the second. You know, different to the ball game is um, is, is Sinton putting back to back guys in, getting extra base hits and it's kind of busted this thing open, or it'd still be, you know, one or two to nothing. First pitch to Brown, scalded to the right-hand side over into the dugout of Sinton. No balls and one strike. And you're right, the the run in the first inning was off of the kind of Bermuda Triangle duck almost off the bat of Cannon Chester that was an RBI single. And then the big inning in the fourth. 
Misses outside, ties it we up on one. We talked about that coming in the game tonight. We were driving down here. We talked about, you know, one inning could be the difference in blowing the thing open. And, and at this point, that's what it's been. And it is, that's true in the, you get this late in the playoffs in any baseball game. So Brown fouls it straight back. One ball and two strikes. Lamb can try to go for his 12th strikeout, possibly the last pitch for him of this regional finals right here in the top of the sixth inning. One ball, two strikes, two outs. Braden Brown at the plate. On deck is Caden McCoy. Lampkin out of the windup. Pitch on the way. Hit, base hit to right center field. Or in between the three and four hole. Right fielder Zapata fires it back in, and Braden Brown's got a two out single. In steps the left fielder, Caden McCoy. McCoy, great play down the left field line in the bottom half of the fifth inning. Now an opportunity here in the top of the sixth to take the baton and pass it. Get the next guy up. That's what Coach Allen is telling these guys to come to the plate. Just figure out a way to get the next guy up. Brown down at first. Lampkin out of the stretch. Pitch on the way. This one's fouled over on the right-hand side. It will get into the stands foul territory. You know, here's a situation where Coach Allen is kind of really doesn't have anything to lose. Maybe a situation, not, you know, I'm not sure what type of speed Brown has, but maybe a situation where he tries to get on second base with a steal to where he, you know, with, with a two-out hit, he can score that, you know, obviously extra run. And so he may try to run here in this situation. 0-1 pitch coming up. You see the two middle infielders are really, really split wide. There's a lot of room. And so, you, you know, possible... You know, maybe a delay steal or something here where those middle infielders are going to have to go a long ways to get there would be something he might, they may look at doing. Breaking ball misses up. That one's down right on the inside. Oh, with four, one ball and two strikes now to Caden McCoy. Big lead over at first base for Braden Brown. Braden's only got five stolen bases on the year. Going to Sam Hayes, Kim Houston State University. Braden Brown. Time called by the home plate umpire. One ball and two strikes here in the top of the sixth inning. Lampkin just about out of pitches. In fact, this may be his last batter. One-two pitch. Lampkin on the way outside. Evens it up 2-2. Started the inning with 92 pitches. Well over 100 now. On deck is the nine-hole hitting designated hitter, Nick Flores. Lampkin set. Glove right at his chest. Leg kick and on the way. Got him on straight. Oh, foul ball. Yep. Just Couldn't squeeze got it, it off the end of the bat. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. Top of the sixth inning. Deuce is wild. Justin Lampkin trying to work out of the top of the sixth inning right here. Leave Braden Brown over at first base after the two-out single. He'll come set. Check over to Brown once and... Make sure that Brown is not going to get an early start here, though, all two and two count. <laughs> but like you said, He's maybe making a sure situation. he doesn't have a one-way lead. Sometimes guys get one-way leads, and on first, on first movement, they're going to second base. And so just taking a little check on that. Two balls, two strikes to McCoy. Two outs. Pitch on the way. Hit towards the second baseman. Buentello will work around it. Fired over to Perez at first. And Justin Lampkin. Good outing for that young man for Cal Allen Wildcats. He leaves one runner on. Sinton leads three to zero through five or through six and a half. Cal Allen coming up in the bottom half of the six. Stay with us. You're watching Texas High School Playoff Baseball. Dave Campbell's Texan Live. Ford built for you, by you. Texas, get yours. Built from the ground up with your choice of colors, wheels, and other available features specifically designed for your Ford. Want a head-up display and escape? Seven GOAT modes in Bronco Sport? Or best-in-class gas torque and Ranger? You got it. And now 1,000 bonus cash on top of all public offers when you custom order. See your local Ford dealer. Order your Ford today and get 1,000 bonus cash plus complimentary maintenance. Ford is the best in Texas. Your husband loves his mesquite smoked ham cut razor thin. That's why H-E-B has online customization and will slice it however you want it. Your daughter loves cheese. She has 27 favorites. Good thing H-E-B offers an unmatched assortment with over 200 specialty varieties. You love having one less thing to do on your to-do list. That's why H-E-B does all the shopping for you and then gets it to your car or front door. 
No store does more to bring the best to your door. Shop H-E-B with always free curbside and only $5 delivery. Team. Bottom of the sixth inning, Wyatt Viatric back out to the mound for the Sinton Pirates. He'll face off against 9-1-2. It'll be Aiden Buentello, Emiliano Zapata, and Ethan Salinas. Looks like we may see a pinch hitter right here, possibly. Yep. Number six, R.J. Cruz. Looks like he is going to be the, the pinch hitter. We'll see if Aiden goes back out to second base. It will be R.J. Cruz. 20th at-bat of the year for R.J. Buentello was 0 for 1 with a ground ball to the shortstop. You know, Coach Chapman's trying to figure out a way to get this nine-hole hitter on, then he's going to be able to flip this lineup back over to the top of his order and give himself a good chance to be able to score some runs here. First pitch from Beatrick right on the inside corner. No balls and one strike. You know, obviously they're trying to – they're chasing more than one run, so they've got to get multiple guys on base here. Bottom, a little low right there. One ball and one strike on the bottom of the zone. Straight up defense in the outfield. Rene Galvan way in in center field. Cannon Chester as well in right. One and one pitch. Misses the outside. Two balls and one strike. Mitchell one in that one. Takes a little bit of extra step out in front of the plate right there. And fires the baseball back to Wyatt Viatric. On deck, top of the lineup, back to Emiliano Zapata. 2-1 pitch on the way. Inside 3-1. and one. I'm sure RJ's taking all the way right here, I imagine. Three balls and one strike to the pinch hitter, RJ Cruz. Big swing from him. Comes up I, empty. See three, what I know. <laughs> three and two. Did swing the strike, though. That was good. Took a big hack at it as well. 3-2 count. This one's hit towards left field. Caden McCoy takes a couple steps in, and he'll have it. Fly ball to the left fielder. Is out number one. Now back to the top of the lineup. I believe we're going to have another pinch hitter right here. It is going to be number 21, Sanchez. Pinch hitter number 21, Isai Sanchez. And it is Isai Sanchez. Sanchez hitting 455 on the year. Thought maybe we would see him in the starting lineup, but he was not. Isai Sanchez will step into the box. Strike on the outside corner. No balls and one strike. So Coach Chapman working it hard right here in the top or the bottom half of the sixth inning. 0-1 pitch, stays outside one and one. Yeah, he's trying to roll some other guys in there and, and see if he can get the figure out some way to get somebody on. So one and one pitch from Viatric way outside, two and one. Wyatt only 61 pitches coming into the uh, inning here. On deck is Ethan Salinas. 2-1 pitch. Bottom part of the zone misses 3-1. and one. Sanchez takes the 3-1 high ball four. So the play works right there for Coach Chapman. He gets a base runner on. 2-3-4 up now with Ethan Salinas and Roberto Perez. Salinas, 325 on the year. Walked his first at bat, was one of the two base runners that were left on base so far for Cal Allen. Isai Sanchez down at first. Catches the inside corner, no balls and one strike to Salinas. Mitchell behind the plate has got a very, very above average arm as well. Oh, yeah. You can. 0-1 pitch coming up to Salinas. Off speed, catches the inside, now 0-2. Talked about Viatric, not a whole lot of yeah. times out of the stretch, but effective right here to Salinas. No balls, two strikes. Wyatt's pitch is on the way. This one's hit towards left field. Kaden McCoy is on his horse trying to get over there. It'll go into foul territory, so it'll stay 0-2. You know, he's got the philosophy here, you know, I... One swing in the bat, the score is worse than it can be. It's three to two, but I don't want to let that guy get on base. The guy hitting him get on base and now bring up the tying run to the plate. And so probably with, you know, with obviously their best home run hitter and their guy RBI guy, their guy that scored more runs, 
And so, you know, you, you don't want that three-hole hitter to be up here on base in this situation. So. 0-2 coming up to Salinas. Fouled straight back, right back towards us, the old ugly finder. I think that would have came right in the window with us. No balls and two strikes. We'll do it again. Salinas battling up there. Nothing but strikes right here to the left fielder for Cal Allen from Wyatt Viatric in this third at bat. 0-2 pitch coming up from Wyatt. Breaking ball, hit right back up the middle. Gonzalez to his left, flips it to short. Galvan, five, four, six, three. And the double play comes in handy for Wyatt Viatric. Marco Gonzalez to Ryland Galvan to Jaquay Stewart, four, six, three on the double play. Sinton leads after six, three to zero over the Cal Island Wildcats. Stay with us. Top of the seventh coming up right here from Whataburger Field in Corpus Christi, Texas. Here at Texas A&M University Kingsville, we are a family. We support each other through thick and thin. We work together, grow together, excel together. We inspire each other to become the great minds of the future. We are here to ensure you succeed. Apply today to get started. This is your time. One more. One more. One more ties, one more. Set, hot. Let's go, one more, one more. Hey, kid. Yeah, we'll take one more. Oh, one more. What? Top of the seventh inning, new pitcher on the mound for the Cal Allen Wildcats. It's Alex Salinas. Alex, .66 ERA, 2-0 in three appearances, 19 strikeouts and four walks in 10.2 innings. Only allowed six hits in his outings. Salinas takes over for Justin Lampkin, whose night is over at 109 pitches, 11 strikeouts for Justin Lampkin. Hats off to that young yeah. man. He pitched to Jim. Can't say enough about Justin. You know, he got got behind early in the ball game and, and, and pitched pitched very well the entire ball game. Kept his team in the in the in the game. Gave them a chance to uh, fight themselves back into this thing. And and uh, so that's all you can ask of your starting pitchers to keep you in the ball game. Salinas flips it over to the right hand side as Justin Lampkin, the tall lefty, Alex Salinas, throws from the right hand side. He is going to square off against this Sinton Pirate team. It will be Nick Flores, then back to the top of the lineup for Marco Gonzalez and Blake Mitchell. Top of the seventh inning, 3-0, to zero, Sinton leads. Marco Gonzalez led this ball game off with a single and scored on the Cannon Chester RBI single in the first. Not another run was scored till the fourth. An RBI triple for Rene Galvan and an RBI double for Braden Brown, and that's where it's 3-0. to zero. Flores takes a big hack at the first pitch from Alex, and it's no balls and one strike. Salinas, another kid, likes to work quick, and so. 0-1 oh, pitch, misses down low, 1-1. One and one. Went from facing a big, tall pitcher and left-hander and Lampkin, and kind of a shorter guy in Salinas here is coming from the right side. So. Ball's flied out towards left field. Ethan Salinas is underneath it, a little to his right, and he'll have it. Nick Flores, fly ball to the left fielder, out number one. It brings up back to the top of the lineup with number eight, Marco Gonzalez. Marco, one for three on the night. Mentioned earlier, had a single in his first at-bat. Scored the opening run of the, of the night. One for three for Marco, grounded out to second base and a fly ball to left field. Right now, it's, it's the difference maker. That, that very true, that is right. Ball one misses high from Alex, one and oh. Off the hands, over towards the Sinton dugout. Kind of got him on that inside corner, one and one, ties him up. We saw Lamb can have success pitching in. Appears that Alex Salinas will do the same. Sticking with the scouting report. 
Two balls and one strike as that one air mails the catcher A.J. Yip is a little bit all the way back to the backstop. Every now and then one of those is warranted, you know. Yeah. The old ex- We're in the bullpen. You expect the guy to throw a little wild one every once in a while. Yep. It's allowed in the first eight pitches. <laughs> Two balls and one strike from Salinas. Fouled off on the right-hand side from Marco Gonzalez. He evens it up 2-2. Salinas will work fast. Roberto Perez way back at first base. Strike three on the inside corner. Got him. Salinas with his first strikeout of the night. Marco Gonzalez goes down, two down here in the top of the seventh. And it brings up the catcher, Blake Mitchell. On deck is Ryland Galvan. Salinas' first pitch way outside, 1-0. Yeah, Salinas got a, got a little bit on the side of that pitch right there. He's starting to throw a breaking ball. I think he kind of let it drop his hand, get on the side of it, and stand his fingers on top of it. One ball and no strikes to Blake. Just below the zone there, 2-0. Blake 0-1 on the night. Struck out against Justin Lampkin and then two walks and was forced off on a fielder's choice both times. Two balls and no strikes. Fouled straight back at us, 2-1. Mitchell, very quick hands on that left-hand side. Roberto Perez, the first baseman, is literally in the grass down the first baseline. (laughs) 2-1 pitch on the way, high 3-1. Can imagine it would be very difficult on a ground ball for Perez to even get back to first base. 3-1 pitch. Ball four misses high. Three walks on the night for Blake Mitchell. Not a surprise. He came in with 32. He's got 35 now. Ryland Galvan steps to the plate. Ryland 0 for 3 with a strikeout. Flat out to the first baseman, Roberto Perez, in foul territory, his last at bat. Had a very long strike in the top of the first inning. On on deck is Jaquay Stewart. Salinas out of the stretch. Mitchell, good lead off of first. Good breaking ball right there from Salinas on the inside corner, 0-1. Another situation here where you may see Coach Alanese try to swipe a bag, get that runner in scoring position. So Mitchell's got seven stolen bases on the year. I said been heating up here in the playoffs, though, with stolen bases. 0-1 pitch. Fly it out on the right field line. It will go foul off the bat of Ryland. It's no balls and two strikes. Another situation where Salinas comes back on the inside right there. That's back-to-back pitches coming inside to Ryland. A little confidence. The first one was a breaking ball. Started it out at his hip and broke it back on the inside corner. Ryland turned on an inside fastball in the top of the first and hit it over towards the sound over there. Big, great move over to first plate, over to first uh, base. and Big tag right there from Roberto Perez. Tried to sell it but didn't get the call. No. What you want in relief pitchers to have a be able to have a good quick pickoff move and to be able to hold runners on base. He does a good job of doing that. It's quick to the plate. 0-2 pitch on the way. Got him. Strike three. Ryland goes down. Sinton leaves one base runner on. On the walk to Blake Mitchell. Bottom of the seventh inning. Coach Chapman's getting his crew together down that third baseline. They've got to put up three runs right here. Cal Allen, Sinton, everything we thought it would be right here, Coach. Bottom of the seventh coming up. Stay with us. You're watching Texas High School Playoff Baseball right here on Dave Campbell's Texan Live. Texas, now's the time to get a Ford built for you, by you. Pick your color, your wheels, and other available features specifically designed for your Ford. Want an F-150 with a 12-inch touchscreen? 400 horsepower and Explorer or a moonroof. You got it. And now 1,000 bonus cash on top of all public offers when you custom order. 
See your local Ford dealer. Order F-150 and get 1,000 bonus cash, 1,000 accessories cash, plus complimentary maintenance. Ford is the best in Texas. Here at Texas A&M University Kingsville, we are a family. We support each other through thick and thin. We work together, grow together, excel together. We inspire each other to become the great minds of the future. We are here to ensure you succeed. Apply today to get started. This is your time. Bottom of the seventh inning. The fans are going to get loud here. Wyatt Beatrick back out to the mound for the Senton Pirates. Coach Steve Chapman. He'll send up 3-4-5. It'll be Roberto Perez, Braden Sprintzel, and A.J. Yepes as they trail by three. The Cal Allen Wildcats have got to get some offense going. Seven strikeouts on the night for Wyatt Viatric. Only one hit for the Cal Allen Wildcats today. And it was an infield hit that was kind of off the second baseman's glove, second baseman a diving effort to try to knock it down. So, it, you know, what really wasn't, hasn't been a ball that's been hit real hard on him all night long. So, he will face the meat of the lineup right here again. Three, four, and five. Roberto Perez, 449, leads the team in hits with 40, leads the team in RBIs with 26. Last little tap right there for Wyatt Viatric. Trying to go the distance for Wyatt right here in this regional final matchup. Region four finals. Winner goes to the state tournament. Up and in, ball one to Perez. You know, you see the Cal hitters here crowding the plate. They may be crowding the plate and taking a strike right here to see if they can, you know, try to get some base runners. They're needing, they're needing two of them to give themselves a chance to get themselves back in it. So, Strike on the outside corner from Beatrick, one and one. Perez taking a little bit of time right here. And you mentioned in pregames, Perez looked like he may be just a little bit tight as well. Kind of an extra stretch right there from Roberto Perez. One ball, one strike. Breaking ball right down Broadway, one and two. I think he might be trying to break the momentum a little bit or the routine of, of Beatrick, but Beatrick's having no part of it right now. One and two on the way. Hit towards the 3-4, and it's in. Second hit for Roberto Perez. Both of them in that 3-4 hole, and it brings up Braden Sprinzel. A no-out hit right here in the bottom of the seventh inning. Well, Coach Chapman's team's going to have that never, never die attitude. They're going to keep fighting you to the bitter end. And so, you know, your, their job right now is to figure out a way to get the next guy up and get the next guy up and next guy up and that's the situation they're in. So, you know, you're going to see the crowds get into this a little bit and emotions are going to get high and so, you know, they're not going to be a very big lead at first base because they definitely don't want to get picked off in this situation. Strike right on the outside corner to Braden Sprinzel. No balls and one strike. You saw Jock kind of get fooled a little bit on that play over at first base. He kind of was breaking toward the bag and it kind of fooled him a little bit and went to his glove side. 0-1 oh, to Braden. Breaking ball. Hit towards the first base. Just mm -hmm. in foul territory. No balls and two strikes. Sprinzel 0 oh for 2 with a strikeout and a fly ball to the left fielder Caden McCoy. He's down 0-2. Oh 384 on the year for Braden coming in. 10 doubles. He does have some power. He's got 24 RBIs and 33 hits. 0-2 pitch from Viatric. Set. Breaking ball. Hit right back up the middle. Base hit for Braden Sprinzel. Back-to-back -back singles for this Cal Allen Wildcat team. And, Coach, you said it. Coach Chapman's team is not going to go away. Yeah, after just... Figuring out a way to get the next guy up. He's, he's hollering over in his dugout right now. I'm sure that's what he's talking about, telling these guys to stay patient. He's obviously. And Coach Chapman is going to walk out and going to make a little bit of a. A little bit runner of a, at second base just got thrown out of the game. A little bit of a play right here is uh, he's going to be out of the game as 
Roberto Perez. Coach Chapman is going to have to find a base runner for that young man. You know, again, it's two teams, two towns that are real close together. They play a lot of baseball against each other, and I'm sure they've had some heated rivalries and heated words of exchange back and forth. And I'm sure the young man just said something, and obviously having a four-man crew, the umpire was out there right on top of it. And, Not a whole lot of secrets out there with that said, many people. So, and so, <laughs> it will but. be number 30 who is going to be the, uh, the runner now for Roberto Perez, and that will be... Trying to get his name. I can't really read it. I believe it may be L.J. Huerta. Yeah. It is. Doesn't change anything still. There's no, you know, yeah, he's no not outs. out. Everybody can stretch imagination. Still runners at first and second with nobody out. Back-to-back -back singles for this Cal Allen Wildcat program. A.J. Yepes steps to the plate. Oh, by the way, A.J. Yepes. 24 hits on the year, 22 RBIs. First pitch from Viatric down low, 1-0. So Viatric came in with only one hit on the evening. Now back-to-back -back singles here in the bottom of the seventh, and the Wildcats have got something going. Misses outside, 2-0. Fastball count right here for the catcher, A.J. Yepes. Theatric comes set. Pitch on the way. High ball three. You know, what you don't want to do right here in this situation is first base runner is kind of getting off the bag a little bit. And you, may, you, know, you don't want to get pick, back pick from the catcher. You know, Mitchell has an outstanding arm, and sure he's not afraid to throw to any bag. So, Ball three, ball four. Four pitch walk to Yepes. The bases are loaded for the Wildcats, and in steps Terry Kickman. We're going to get a visit from Coach Allen he's here to try to calm his calm his troops down a little bit. Hickman, 265 on the year. He leads the team in runs. He leads the team in RBIs. And guess what? He leads the team in home runs with five for this Cal Allen Wildcat team. A huge at-bat for the center fielder for the Wildcats right here. Coach Chapman walks down, has a quick conversation with his base runners. And we may get a pinch runner again right here, possibly. It does look like Nate Lopez has got a helmet. He may run for the courtesy run for the catcher, A.J. Yepes, right here. We'll see if he goes out. Coach Allenese. Going to get a new pitcher. Braden Brown. Braden Brown will come on to the mound for Senton. So Wyatt Viatrix night is done. Don't let the seventh inning change anything for Wyatt Viatric. He was gold tonight. Yeah, he threw a gym. He really did. He got out there and competed well. Stayed ahead of hitters all night long and, you know, had a little, you know, just unfortunate luck here in the in the, in the the seventh inning getting a couple guys on, but you got to credit that to Cal Allen. And so, you know, they've got a – your team pitching ERA is 1.10 on the season. And so, you know, they've got a bunch of pitchers that can go out there and do the job on the mound. So – Braden Brown, 7-0. He does have two saves on the year. Looking for his third one, and his third one would be the biggest of 2022 for him. 1.25 ERA, 63 strikeouts. Only nine earned runs scored on Braden Brown. Nick Flores, the designated hitter, will slide over to third base. So he will now enter the game, and Wyatt Viatrix night is done. Wyatt goes out with seven strikeouts on the night but responsible for the three base runners that are on base here in the bottom of the seventh inning. Here's a situation where you know, you're trying to get outs. And so you know, Coach Allenese is telling his infielders, make sure we're getting out. You know, uh, any base really doesn't matter, but let's make sure we're getting out. Not necessarily worried about the lead man by any stretch of the imagination. We're just making sure that we get outs in this situation. Got a three-run lead. You know, so we're where we are. And I hate to say it, but you are counting outs right now. So you're well, you're to willing to give up that run right. at third base. That's if you can exactly get a ground right. ball in the middle, either a four six three or a six four three, right up the middle, you're willing to take those two outs because again, that runner at third base can't beat you. Uh, nor can the runner at second base, for that matter. If you let him get to third, 
Uh, but you'll definitely take two outs in this situation. So uh, I'm with you. I think the middle infield's probably playing not all the way back, but in double play depth. And, of course, you may pinch be, on the corners. I'd be willing to bet that everybody's back. I'd be willing to bet the first baseman's probably back. First, second, you know, first baseman, second baseman, probably shortstop will all be back. You may see the third baseman in just a little bit, but, you know, they're trying to cut off those angles and, and, and make sure that they, you know, don't don't reduce this infield down so much that balls start getting through, getting through holes. And so. Biggest innings of the year right here for Braden Brown, for sure, here in the Region 4 Finals at Corpus Christi, Texas. We're right here at Whataburger Field. Coach Dane Saucere, Jared Robinson here with you, and this is everything we thought it would be. Brown out of the stretch. Hickman, first pitch, low and away, 1-0. And, of course, you mentioned this earlier as a reliever. In this situation, you've got to come in and throw strikes. Yeah. You, there's nowhere to put anybody. 1-0 pitch. And Caught the outside, 1-1. One one. You've got to slow the game down mentally. You know, you've got to slow it down and just and, and, and go back to your fundamentals and your mechanics and, and really work on concentrate on playing catch here with Blake. 1-1 one one pitch from Braden Brown, outside, 2-1. First baseman and third baseman right in the baseline. It's not really pinched in, per right. se. Second and third right at double play depth. In the outfield, they're straight up. Ryland Galvan pinched in a little bit at center field. The other two are pretty deep. You know, with this situation, you don't want a ball to get to the gap because you don't want to, you know, a ball in the gap could score the runner from first base, and so they're playing a little bit deeper than what they normally would be playing. Two and two now, Braden Brown. Hickman swung through strike two, and you're right, no doubles out there in the outfield. You definitely don't want the runner at first to score right here. The tying run is at first base. Two balls, two strikes from Brown. Come set, pitch on the way. Just a little bit outside, three balls and two strikes. You had 3,500 people wanted to get a strike, and 3,500 people thought it was a ball. <laughs> on deck is Tres Vasquez, 3-2. No outs here in the bottom of the seventh. Brown walks the run in. Hickman with the RBI walk. In comes the base runner for Roberto Perez. Braden Sprintzel down to third. Terry Hickman goes to first base, and the bases are still loaded. And no outs, and we may get a defensive move right here. Aiden Lozano, I believe, is who that's going to be. He's going to go into center field, and it looks like Rene Galvan is going to come off. Coach Adrian Alani is going to come talk to the home plate umpire real quick and let him know the situation. So one for Adrian Alani the change as Aiden Moody comes in for number four, Rene Galvan. Lozano, the sophomore, has been a defensive replacement all year. Three to one now. Now it changes the whole game because the runner at second base is going to score, you know, can possibly score on a base hit. And so your infield, your outfielders go back to playing their normal depth now. Trace Vasquez takes ball one low and in. Vasquez 0 for 2, grounded out to the first baseman and flew out to the left fielder. 286 on the year for Vasquez. Brown comes set. Caught the outside corner, evens it up one and one. On deck is the shortstop, Matt Lopez. It's the most energy we've seen in the stadium tonight. Everybody is standing now. We're ready to go. One and one pitch from Brown. Fouled straight back, barely missed that one. Trace Vasquez just underneath at one and two. You know, right now, you know, he knows that you know, Braden's going to give him his best fastball, and he's going to have to take his best swing at a fastball. And so, One ball, two strikes. Brown set. Pitch on the way, way outside, two and two. Let that breaking ball come out of his hand quite a bit early right there, Coach. Yeah, he just kind of was on the side of it. So do not want to go 3-2, so I'm sure he's going to be working the zone right here. 2-2 two -two pitch. Brown takes a minute. Pitch on the way outside, full count. RBI walk just a moment ago from Terry Hickman. Made this a three to one ball game. And you'll hear the Cal Allen faithful screaming out ball four. Three-two pitch from Brown. 
Mitchell sets up outside, got him on the strike. High fastball from Braden Brown. Vasquez swings through it, one out now. Here in the bottom of the seventh, and it brings up the shortstop, Matt Lopez. Big pitch there from, from Braden. A good job of, you know, pounding the strike zone. Coach Allen is going to come in right now. He's going he's gonna to go out there and kind of talk to his infielders and visit with them about the situation and let them understand what's about to happen in this situation. I think they're going to change. They're going to bring Blake Mitchell in right here. Ryland Galvan's going to go back behind the plate. So Blake Mitchell's going to go change out of the gear. Ryland Galvan will go back behind the mound, and Braden Brown will go to shortstop. We're going to take a quick break, but I'm telling you, don't go anywhere. Bottom of the seventh inning, bases are loaded, one out right here from Corpus Christi, Texas, Region 4 Finals. You're watching Dave Campbell's Texan Live. Here at Texas A&M University Kingsville, we are a family. We support each other through thick and thin. We work together, grow together, excel together. We inspire each other to become the great minds of the future. We are here to ensure you succeed. Apply today to get started. This is your time. And we are back. Dave Campbell's Texan Live. We got us a good one right here. Whataburger Field. And would you expect anything less? That people have said it's number one versus number three, number one versus number two. It doesn't really matter. No, it sure doesn't. Because I'm going to tell you right now, Blake Mitchell has been behind the dish this whole night, squatting the entire game, but he's going to get his chance at Matt Lopez and Aiden Buentello. As he works his way out to the mound, Ryland Galvan will go back behind the dish. Braden Brown will go to second base. And yeah, good job the there. You know, see Braden, Braden coming off the field. You know, great job there by him of getting that, third, getting that strikeout, getting that first out inning. Sometimes in the seventh inning, it's, it's, e it's easy for me to say, but getting that first out, that first and third out of the seventh inning is sometimes a very difficult thing to do mentally and he came in there and did a good job of of kind of getting them out of a little bit of a jam and getting that first out and getting them in a situation where they can come now with with Mitchell and and and, and create this situation where he can try to get them out of, the, of this other jam. Well we talked about Blake Mitchell's arm behind the mound or behind the plate earlier guess what he can bring it just as good on the mound yeah. .5 ERA on the year 5-0 and oh, he's got two saves Strikeout to walk ratio, 59 strikeouts to only 11 walks for Blake Mitchell. One thing I did notice, though, last week when he played uh, against Tolosa Midway in the first inning, he was a little bit inconsistent right off the bat. You got to wonder how much of that comes into play right here. He's caught six innings of baseball, six plus innings of baseball now, six and a third behind the plate. How much do the legs kind of come into play right yeah, here for that young man? It's probably one of those things where, you know, he's obviously. He's good and lathered up. He's been sweating all night long. So from a standpoint of him being warm or not being warm, he's definitely warmed up, you know, and gotten himself in this situation. It's not a situation where he hasn't been in before for them. And so, you know, Coach Alanese is not going to go to this young man unless he's confident in his, in in what he what he can do. And he's proven to them in the past that he can do this before. And so, you know, here's a situation where you're going to see you know, his best fastball, and he's a fastball pitcher, you know, and these guys are going to have to go up there and they're going to have to prove they can and uh, go up there and put the ball in play and make something happen. So, you know, thing right here is you want to make sure that you don't – obviously the winning run now is on first base, and so as outfielders, we're going to go back to that no-double situation to where, you know, we're not going to let the winning run score from first base on a ball in the gap. And so, uh, you know, you don't want to have any back picks there from – you know, get, get picked off of the base. Make sure you know how many outs there are, so you don't, you know, you don't, you don't get doubled up on a line drive and all those situations. What Coach Chapman's going over with his players right now. Ryland Galvan moves back behind the plate. Matt Lopez, 3.33 on the year. He's got 16 hits, six of those extra base hits. Strike one on the inside corner from Blake Mitchell on the fastball. Mitchell, good velocity, probably low to mid 90s. No balls and one strike. Bases are loaded for the Wildcats. Fly it out down the right field line, and it will go foul. 0-2 quickly to the shortstop for the Wildcats. On deck, 
the second baseman, Aiden Buntello. Exactly what Blake needed to do. He needed to come out there and make sure he established he could throw strikes down in the strike zone. That's what he just did. He's got out there and pounded the first two right down the bottom of the zone. No balls and two strikes now. Pitch on the way, misses low and away, one and two. Mentioned a minute ago, six of the 16 hits for Lopez. Extra base hits, two triples and four doubles for the shortstop from the Wildcats. One-two pitch, Mitchell comes set, brings it. Strike three, got him. Lopez goes down, two outs. Going to get a pinch hitter right here. It's going to be number 26, Reed Reyes. 250 on the year for Reed. Stewart over at first base, asking the Sinton faithful to bring it up. Standing room only right now here at Whataburger Field. First pitch to Reyes. Caught the inside corner 0-1. No balls and one strike, two outs, bottom of the seventh inning. Cal Allen has put themselves with an opportunity right here. A base hit, scores two, and ties this. No balls and one strike. Mitchell flared towards third base. Over to Flores. Falls to the turf. Flores tripped a little bit over there at third base, it looked like, and missed it. Mitchell looking over at Flores and saying, hey, I got you right here. Veteran move from the pitcher right there. Jaquay Stewart's going to come in. What could have been right there and out to end the ball game. Over at third base, Nick Flores couldn't come up with it. Reyes with another chance. No balls and two strikes. Mitchell on top of the mound. Inside missed low, one and two. I like what Blake did to his third baseman right there. Like you said, he hollered at him over there and told him, hey, I got you. Hang in there. Ball's coming. Ball's coming right back to you in this situation. So you got to you know, be ready for the ball to come. Don't worry about what just happened. One-two pitch. Mitchell comes set. Reyes, the pinch hitter. Bases loaded. On the way. Flied out towards right field. Second baseman, Gonzalez. Stewart, the first baseman, will call him off, and he'll have it. Sinton's going to the state tournament. Region four champions. Wyatt Viatric will get the win, and he pitched an absolute gem today. And the Sinton Pirates appear to be going for the pool. They're going to take a splash out in right field. <laughs> Coach Adrian Holonese is saying, you guys come back down here. The Sinton Pirates are your Region 4 champions, and Coach, we knew it was going to be a good game. We knew it was going to be a pitcher's duel. Justin Lampkin and Wyatt Viatric both on the field. We knew 100% it was going to be a good one, and guess what? It did not disappoint in any which way, form, or fashion. Yeah, you know, you, good pitching. You know, you can't say enough about good pitching. Both these teams, you know, had good pitching. Lampkin did a great job for Kyle, and... You know, obviously, Viatra came in and did a great job with his kids. But, you know, you, you know, anytime you have good pitching, good defense, you put two good teams on the field together, you know, you're going to get a good ball game. And that's exactly what we got tonight is a great ball game. Yeah, you had Justin Lampkin, and hats off goes to that young man uh, over there for Cal Allen. That was a, a great performance, an 11 strikeout performance for him. Gave up the one run uh, in the first and then turned around and the, a couple hits, you said it, a couple hits, you put them together at the right time. Rene Galvan, an RBI triple. Braden Brown with an RBI double. You, you, you get those couple hits strung together yeah. and you put up the, the, the two runs right there in the fourth, and that's the difference in the ball game. Yeah, how big were those two balls that kind of landed out there in no man's land and both scored runs in that situation too and so you know just the, just the, just little things like that and like I said putting together a couple big hits in one inning and making putting a crooked number up on the board you know that crooked number is a difference in the ball game but uh, you know again hats off to the Sinton Pirates you know unbelievable ball game tonight coach Chapman and the Cal and Wildcats you know they that's what his program is about what just happened there in the seventh inning with his kids 
never say die attitude, staying with staying within the ball game, staying within the game plan, getting up there and figuring out a way to get the next guy up. And you can't say enough about Coach Chapman, but hats off to Sinton on the game that they had, and they're going to get themselves another another trip to the state tournament. Back-to-back trips to the state tournament for Coach Adrian Alanese and the Sinton Pirates. You're right. They're going to they're going to play Wednesday, whether it's 1 o'clock or 4 o'clock. It won't really matter to I bet them. it's hot. It's, it's going to be about 102 degrees <laughs> uh, there at Dish Falk in Austin, Texas. But I tell you, they'll take the heat and they'll take it happily as the Sentin Pirates tonight are your Region 4 champions right here at Whataburger Field in Corpus Christi, Texas. Coach Dane Sauce here. It's been a good one. We appreciate you coming down and joining us. And we'll, uh, we'll be there at the state tournament. Yes, we will. Wednesday, 1 o'clock or 4 o'clock. The, the schedule will be released later on as far as which time slot they will have in their opponent. But we're going to be there with you. Coach Saucier and I will be calling all of the state championship for the 4A from Dish Falk Field. For Coach Dane Saucier, cameraman Pat Lowry, Sinton takes the victory tonight here on a Thursday night. Everybody have a great evening and good night. Here at Texas A&M University Kingsville, we are a family. We support each other through thick and thin. We work together, grow together, excel together. We inspire each other to become the great minds of the future. We are here to ensure you succeed. Apply today to get started. This is your time.